I, I see other faculty, Marilyn Goodman. I don't have access to see the whole ribbon right now, but any of you that are here, I just wanna give a heartfelt thank you. Uh, even though we are all separate right now, I know that we're continuing to do this work together to support our students and the initiatives that the school uh, is really pushing forward to make sure that after COVID, uh, you know, calms down a bit and we can get back to business that we have people to put back into business. So I just wanna thank uh, again for all of that support from the top down. Um, we couldn't do this without us all attacking this together. So thank you. And of course, not only is it the people that are in faculty and that are in administration and staff that make this possible, but one of the exciting things of course is getting to hear from our students. And while we have a lot of emerging entrepreneurs. We also have past entrepreneurs because, as I said, this is biannual at this point, and we have students coming through this and achieving all kinds of success. So at this point, I really want to turn the table over to not only a former city, well, a CCFS student, but also the founder of OUT, uh, Isabel Bernal. I, I just want to welcome you, and I am super excited to hear because I know about all the success that's come just really since last semester when we did this in December. So Isabel, thanks for being here. Excited to hear a few words. Thank you, Jonathan. Hey, everyone. Um, just to introduce myself, my name's Isabel, and Last semester, I was a student in Prof. Vivian's Intro to Entrepreneurship class. And through this class, I was able to be a, now be a part of a startup company um, in the fintech industry called Edge Mobile Payments. And it's based here in San Francisco. And what we're doing is we're building a product that can um, consolidate all of your cards um, into a single device that's equipped with, uh, you know, right technologies and for privacy and efficiency. And of course, this wouldn't have been possible if it, you know, weren't for an incredible professor such as Prof. Vivian. She really works her magic to make things happen and provide the right resource, resources for her students to ensure their success, whether in class or, you know, if, it, if they decide to pursue their ideas out of the classroom. So first of all, a huge thank you to Prof. Vivian and to all those who help and collaborate with her in making things or events like this possible. And <clears throat> just a bit of background on how I got the job. One of the guest speakers in our class last semester, uh, he's here today, Mr. Ian Utili another person I'm greatly thankful for, who's very generous to share all his wisdom and lessons. Um, so he was helping us prepare for the pitch night a week before the event. This was back in December of last year. And part of the prep was a two minute interview with Mr. Utili. And within this two minute conversation with him, he managed to connect the idea that I was pitching um, with his old friend's patent that serendipitously turned out to be very similar with my idea. And so I contacted his friend, Peter Garrett, through LinkedIn, and everything just fell into place after that. He's now my boss, and I his team took me on as a project manager, which is very strange to say out loud, considering I'm very new to the industry. I have no professional experiences. And I'm not really sure what I'm doing at times, but I learn so much every day and I can easily see uh, myself staying and, you know, growing with this company in the long term. And so I, the way I personally see it is if you really are passionate and you can clearly see where you want to go and what you want to achieve while being honest with yourself, then it takes a ton of courage coupled with hard work. And I say that because I think it's more about deciding to, um, you know, put yourself out of your comfort zone and stay out of it. You know, being open to wild things you never thought would happen and embracing challenges and responsibilities. So that being said, just remind yourself that you already have a great support system within the CCSF community. Um, you know, the business community, CEI community, wonderful professors ready to guide and support you. They all have your backs and they just want to see you and your ideas succeed and get it out there to 
benefit society in one way or another. And lastly, I just want to acknowledge that reaching this point is such a great achievement in itself, especially with our current circumstances. I mean, everyone's facing their own challenges and struggles. So the fact that you are here today ready with your presentations is a big deal. And as you pitch, just keep in mind that we are all rooting for you and keep letting your ideas be heard because you never know where it might lead you. Good luck to everyone. Ah, uh, thank you. Thank you so much for those words of encouragement, of honestly, of inspiration. Um, I just wanted to just point out some things that I thought were really um, amazing about your story. And that's, you know, just about kind of what you were saying about harnessing and energy and excitement. And when I look at your story, I'm seeing elements, you know, that are very common for success, which is one, you're learning knowledge, you're learning from people who are experts in a variety of ways. You're also developing relationships with people who believe in you, Ian, Vivian, and then those people are able to extend their network to you. And really like networking and knowing the right people is super important as well as getting the right support and the right knowledge. And I just wanted to share how excited. I'm so proud to know that you're a CCSF rep, that you're part of the Center for Entrepreneurship and Innovation. But not only that, but that your story isn't necessarily an isolated one. It's a, a journey and it's a story and a narrative that's going to continue. And you're at the beginning of it. And I'm just so happy to see your success. But it's really because you've done the right things. It's because you harnessed opportunity and you did the things that you needed to do to get it done. This stuff doesn't happen on its own. And it can be really scary to look inside of yourself and pull out a dream that the world has never seen that you've never been honest with. So I just wanna say, it's so inspiring to me, but it's not only inspiring because it's you, but you are a model for all of our students. Um, you're a model for me, um, who has you know, broken my own perceptions of my business capacity. And I just wanna say thank you for that because your success inspires us and gives a pathway to people to follow. Uh, so thank you so much again for sharing. Um, and with that, I would love, as you were saying, to just briefly turn this over. Um, Ian Utile has been with us for years. Before this was curriculum, before it was a whole program, when it was a lecture series, Ian has been with us from pretty much the start uh, and has been heavily involved with these pitch competitions and also inspiring and guiding our students. So I'd like to turn it over to him and he's going to uh, say a few words and then turn it over to our panelists to introduce themselves before we get on to the actual pitching. So again, uh, thank you so much, Isabel. And Ian, I'd love to turn it over to you now. Hi, everybody. So here we are again for another biannual pitch event. I was uh, had a great time with the students on Wednesday. So for all the students that are on here that are about to pitch, um, it's going to go better than you could possibly expect, right? This is not a competition where it's the students against one another. This is a, we could use the word competition, if that's fine, but it's a collaborative, collaboration, okay? All of you are together. All of you help one another. A rising tide raises all ships. I remember what I shared with you on Wednesday is there are two primary things that the judges will be looking for, right? Now, of course, we care about you're solving a problem. We care that you have a clear ask. We care about the content or the design, or if you thought through the finance, like, of course we care about all of those details. But what we're really looking for today from the 20 or so students that are at the City College San Francisco's Center for Entrepreneurship in the Innovation to Entrepreneurship class, what we're looking for are two things. One is that you start and end your presentation in three minutes or less. And don't worry about starting early and ending early, just please don't go over. Number two, conviction, right? The judges, we want to believe you, right? We don't have to uh, understand every single little detail and concept. You can make mistakes, you can stutter, you can forget things, you can mess up, but conviction. We want to believe that you believe what you're telling us. It's very, very important. And uh, especially in a context like this where the stakes are really low, and the potential benefit is really, really high. So that is what we're looking for. We're looking for the ability uh, to watch all of the students um, be able to 
pitch last three minutes and be convicted. Uh, then we will, the judges, will follow up with some questions for two minutes. So that's the flow of today, right? In just a moment, I will have our four uh, esteemed judges that we're incredibly grateful to have with us uh, for this event. I'll have them introduce themselves. And, uh, and then if there's uh, enough time, I think there will be, I'll do a quick introduction about myself for those that do not know me. And uh, this will be our chance to kind of let you know who we are. And then we will be able to hand it off to the first uh, student to pitch. Um, we have the chat window open. So obviously, if you have questions for Vivian or Jonathan, our facilitator, or myself uh, moderating, uh, then we're, we're open. We're, we're right here available for you. For those that are logged in, uh, if you're logged in on your computer, you might get a little bit better sound if you call in separately and just do the video by computer and the audio by cell phone. Depends on where you're at, your connection of Wi-Fi, hardwire, internet, all those things. We are live on YouTube through Zoom. We're also live on Amazon Alexa. This is probably the only college pitch event that's live on a voice device because my company built a software that lets us do it. I don't think anybody else can. So that's kind of fun, right? We're, we're innovating right here at, as a community. So uh, with that, um, Jonathan, I am guess I'm just going to ask, is it time for us to introduce uh, the judges, or I'm going to hand it back to you, and, and feel free yeah, to hand the con back to me when you're ready. It is absolutely about that time. I just wanted to give a couple of words for the audience and as well for the judges. Um, I just wanted to know, I'm gonna be a gentle voice, both participants and judges, that's gonna be keeping us on track for time. So, you know, if you're getting close, you're like 15, 30 seconds away from your time limit students, you might hear my voice come in and just say 30 seconds. I just want you to be prepared for it mentally so that doesn't throw you off too much. And then judges, I will be respectful, but assertive also to make sure that we stay track, stay on track with time. But also I wanna uh, really encourage uh, audience members, students, whoever else is here, you know, pay it as close attention as possible because not only are the judges going to be giving their evaluation of this and picking a winner, we're also gonna ask everybody in the audience to vote for their top three choices via a poll after the competition. So I just wanna invite you to take notes, pay attention and maybe make, you know, note, notate ones that really stand out to you that you might wanna vote for because there are, um, prizes for winners involved with those. So um, other than that, Ian, I think that's my piece. From now on, you'll probably just hear 30 seconds or so from me. Uh, so let's take it over to the panelists and get the show on the road. Wonderful. All right. Well, let's go ahead and introduce uh, our panelists. Why don't we start with Lauren Taylor? Uh, so Lauren, why don't you unmute yourself? I'm going to pin your video so everybody can see uh, you crystal clear. And you look great. So could you introduce yourself to us? You've been with us uh, just about for every event, and you are a wonderful friend to these students. Thanks so much, Ian. I'm so glad to be here. And thank you to Vivian and Jonathan and Leo and to the entire CCSF um, staff and community. Thank you. Uh, it's really an interesting time. It's such a challenging time for us here locally. Um, but many of us have a global family and community and it's just unprecedented what it is that we are experiencing right now. And to be able to come together and uh, share this time together is really special. And one of the things that I think is so important and meaningful to me personally about what CCSF is doing with the Center for Entrepreneurship and Innovation is that it's really focused on solving problems. And we are just coming into a time when your problem solving skills and abilities uh, manifesting in entrepreneurship is, is so important uh, for, for our recovery. So thank you all of you for being here and for putting um, your skills, your experience and your passion to work to improve our communities and our world. Um, my name is Lauren Taylor. I'm managing partner at Zero Gravity Agency. We are a product development and marketing consultancy here in the Bay Area. Um, we work with early stage startups on product development. We work with later stage startups on marketing. 
um, and product development as well. Um, and then we also uh, perform our, our, just a range of services to support founders. And in addition to that, I'm an angel investor um, and I'm really excited and interested in supporting um, uh, innovators working at the intersection of um, impact and, uh, and digital. So thank you, I'm glad to be here. All right, thank you so much, Stacy. I'm sorry, Lauren. I was going to have Stacy introduce himself next. So, uh, Stacy, are you ready to jump in and give I, a quick introduction for all these students? I am absolutely ready to jump in. Not only am I going to jump in, I'm going to dive in head first. So, uh, thank you all for having me. I've been super excited about this, um, not just today, but ever since Vivian reached out to me and uh, kind of let me know what was going on. So I've been very excited about it. And just to kind of give you a little bit about who I am, um, I'm not so much an inventor as I am a tinkerer. And in turn, I've always had, I guess, a passion for entrepreneurship. And in turn, it's really no surprise that I work at Indiegogo, um, probably the best crowdfunding platform out there as you all probably know. And it's our mission to empower um, empower entrepreneurs like yourselves and aspiring entrepreneurs. So I couldn't be happier uh, to be here with you guys. Ian, I believe you're, I believe you're muted, by the way. Yeah, I was on mute. I was on mute. The joy of muting and unmuting on Zoom as a facilitator. Thank you, Stacey. We're glad to have you here. Uh, this event will be better because you're a part of it. Um, I'd like to ask Galena to introduce herself. Galena, can I ask you to jump on and do that? Uh, yes, um, this is my second time of being at the pitch competition at um, City College. Vivian, thank you for inviting me. And I'd like to introduce myself. I am a co-founder of Goodler. It's a tech company that helps um, organizations working on aid sustainability and development to connect local needs with local resources uh, with the goal of building resilient communities. So this is uh, a tech company and I'm also a co-founder of Goodler Foundation, which is uh, an educational foundation. We teach young people entrepreneurship and uh, promoting systems thinking approach to solving a problem. So I'm in uh, impact space and have been in an impact space for a while. Goodler is part of the um, United Nations uh, Compact for Young People in Humanitarian Action. It's a policymaking group that where we sit down and write policies on how to engage young people in, uh, um, you know, in changing the world for themselves and for their own communities. And um, I'm also that you're never, uh, you're never out of startup world once you're in the startup world, I would say, because um, we're also, Goodler is spinning uh, to uh, create another solution that will combine our educational platform and our technology. And we're developing an uh, AI powered women focused online entrepreneurial skills training and community opportunities matching platform for women uh, in recovery. And this technology will be provided to all drug treatment centers, uh, will be cost-effective options to prepare women for in meaningful engagement opportunities. Um, it is an initiative, initiative that got funded by National Institute of Health. So I am kind of like back in the startup world um, and, uh, you know, had to teach quite a bit about that solution. Uh, one of the things that I wanted to encourage you all and, and um, that your time is not wasted by pitching online. It's one of the extra steps that is always part of the pitching, the uh, online pitching to investors. And those uh, investors in the audience would, would know your, your first pitch, you know, maybe with one pager, and then you're never invited in person to, uh, to do the presentation, or it's very rare when you actually have a chance to present it on stage. But more often than not, you will be presenting online, just like you're going to be doing right now. So this is for you, as um, Ida mentioned, that 
Ian mentioned that it's a very uh, low stress kind of environment. So take that opportunity to practice as if you were to pitch like a true investors who invited you for the session. So it's not wasted. It's a great opportunity for you to learn how to do it online. And uh, good luck to all of you. Thank you. Wonderful. And now I will ask uh, Glebar, That's right. other judge, yes. to join us and jump in and introduce yourself and let the students know who you are. We're really glad to have you here with us. So thank you very much. Yeah, thank you, Ian. Uh, thank you, Vivian, uh, Jonathan, the whole team uh, for inviting me. This is my first time uh, serving as a judge um, of this competition. I'm uh, very pleased and uh, honored to be here and uh, appreciate your um, uh, you are, I mean, having an opportunity to uh, review your your pitches and to uh, give you some feedback. Hopefully, it'll be helpful. I uh, I'm a faculty member. I work at the University of San Francisco. Uh, teach entrepreneurship and innovation. I'm also a director of New Venture Center that uh, is designed to work with um, undergraduate students and their uh, projects, their ventures. Uh, I also direct two master's programs, so uh, yeah, I'm pr practically 24-7 operation. Uh, master's of Global Entrepreneurship Management, uh, which is a partnership between the three universities, um, a university in Taipei, Taiwan, and the university in Barcelona. So it's a global partnership uh, to offer um, uh, global management education with entrepreneurial mindset. My other program, which we co-founded uh, with the uh, former chair and a good colleague of mine, the Master of Science in Entrepreneurship and Innovation, is also offered at the University of San Francisco. And that's a program where students go through very extensive training, uh, preparing them for, uh, for venture launch or launching their careers uh, from Silicon Valley, as we put it. So, um, so we have uh, quite a bit of um, uh, hopefully understanding a very extensive network within the valley and and beyond and of course we are constantly mentoring and um, supporting our students and uh, our alumni and we're happy to support anyone who has great idea and can bring this forward articulate it and uh, eventually be prepared to launch a venture so we are a pretty significant resource and we are uh, incredibly excited and supportive of the uh, uh entrepreneurship especially among students so good luck to you all uh i'm sure it's going to be a great event and uh, look forward to um uh sharing my experience and hopefully some wisdom with you um thank you very much for having me well we're we're very glad to have you and it's uh great what you and all the other leaders at the city college san francisco and all the other learning institutions uh, higher learning uh, you here in the Bay Area. It's amazing uh, the heart that is behind each of the leaders that are serving the students. So um, with the last, uh, we do have enough time, I guess I'll introduce myself. So um, my name is Ian Utili. I've helped with these events since uh, Vivian first had the idea to launch these pitch events. And uh, usually, yes, we're physically together, right? And high energy and the room is full and we have drinks and food and like it's that whole vibe. And the thing I told all of the students uh, that are with us right now a couple of days ago is, you know what? This is actually just right because sometimes students get the chance to face really difficult adversity with low stakes. You see, it's adverse for you to have to present online in comparison, a room full of smiling faces and energy and all that. So that's unfortunate, but it matches the market. Right now, the entire market has to face that adversity, except for their stakes are really, really high, right? There's executives and biz dev people that are dealing with seven, eight, nine figure type of responsibilities that are dealing with the same adversity with really high stakes. So yes, it's unfortunate that you have to do this online in comparison to the joy of being in community, but it's just right that you would be doing this online so you could actually feel the type of unexpected uh, hurdles that come in entrepreneurship. So I think you should feel uh, really you know, settled 
with that. We are live on YouTube. I have shared the link uh, of us being on YouTube. I do a lot of live streaming. I've uh, probably done a couple thousand hours of live streaming just in the last couple of years, which may sound completely ridiculous to all of you, but I actually ride around in my car with five cell phones and I'm live on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook and all these platforms at one time. And then I grab my cell phone. I go, there's a problem with the world, everybody. And the problem is that it takes too many phones. It takes too many phones to go live. And I say, and here's a solution. It's just attention live, right? It's just one product going live on every platform. And so this is what I do. I built a company called Attention Live. And from one place, you can go live on all these different platforms. That's what we have built. Um, I am the guy that talks a lot and has ideas, but I have a team that does all the building. And so by no means uh, have I built this myself, but I've been able to work with the same team. I have seven people on my team. We've worked together for over 80 years collectively, which is great. That didn't have the long-term relationships. And so uh, I love people. I love building things. I love creating the future. Uh, these are things that get me excited. And I really uh, appreciate the opportunity to participate with all the students. I think there's many, many, many people that can have similar outcomes to Isabel right? She meets myself. I'm just one of the judges. I connected with her. Oh, wow. I know the perfect person to, con to have you talk to. And now she's working with them and building out her idea out, right? And it can be the same way with Lauren, right? You student could connect with Lauren and Lauren could say, this is somebody I'm going to make a connection for. This is somebody I'm going to do something to push them forward and succeed. And so that is what we as the uh, you know, judges are here to do. We are here to serve you. The school is not paying us to be here, right? We, are, we, we don't get any sort of big benefit from being here. We are here just to be available and to be part of your day. Today is your day. So that's my introduction. I believe that we're ready to get started and we're one minute early, so yay for us. So Jonathan, I'm gonna go ahead and hand the baton back to you and why don't you get us started right all right excellent thank you so much to everybody uh thanks uh judges for letting us get to know you a little bit clearly tons of talent tons of experience tons of inspiration um so super excited to get the show on the road so i think at this point um if we want to go ahead and get the um, share the screen, we have somebody that is going to be sharing the pitch deck, uh, and that will help us. And then Raul uh, Morales Rivera with uh, Alenea will be our first pitcher. So it looks like that is set to go. So I'm going to step out here and I am going to let Raul introduce himself and his amazing endeavor. Jonathan, I'm sorry, can we um, just clarify before we start that Stacy and I are going to be the ones who are going to do the scorecard for um, the first person and um, Gleb and Galena are going to give uh, comments and feedback and then we'll reverse for the next participant. Perfect, perfect. Yes, thank you. We, we got it set up so that people can give a little bit more attention in this kind of format and pay really close attention to everybody. So people are handing off, um, the judges are splitting judging and getting questions to every other person. So thank you for that, to make sure everyone's on the same page. And I think with that, uh, Raul, if you're ready to go, I think we're all ready for you. All ready, okay, I'm ready. So um, I start, okay. Uh, hi guys, uh, my name is Raul Morales. Uh, I have, uh, the, my, my project is Alinea Hair Re Regenerative Clinic for Men. This is, I am the founder. And uh, next slide, please. Oh, thank you. So uh, the company purpose is uh, regeneration of follicle through personalized cell therapy. Next. Um, so in the, the United States, one of the biggest problem it is uh, uh, in men after 40 years old, we have uh, alopecia, which is hair loss. And so 80% is a lot of the Caucasian men in the United States. So one of the effects that it has is the image. Obviously, we have some problems with uh, psychological issues also and others. Uh, 
by the FDA, we have only two drugs that can solve, not solve, but can uh, help to, to prevent this, but they have uh, uh, side effects. One of those is uh, the, loss, the loss of libido on men. So that's really important. Next, next slide, please. Thank you. So uh, since we, we saw, I saw this problem, I was wondering uh, what other solutions can be since I'm in, I am in the science background. So I, I noticed that uh, the, the follicle can be re regenerated through the factors that we have in, the, in, in, in our body, just manipulate them those and put it together so we can put it on the specific target, in this case, the follicle. And that will be a safe and a personalized uh, therapy that can be uh, approached. Next. So what, what is the market right now? The market in, in, in our project is focused for men. And it is, has a potential of uh, 4 billion US dollars in the allo allo alopecia androgenetic uh, market. Next, please. So how do you, you, you wonder how can we do money for, from this project? So is the, the project, it is, it is based on the cell therapies, which, which it, is, uh, it is a format of one, one therapy per month uh, for the following six months. And one annual maintenance. Also, we have a program for pre preventance, pre prevention. Also, we have services that include a lab and others, hair products specialized in this area, and a franchise. Next. And we're at 30 seconds. So basically, we, if we think about looking in a three years, we have a thinking of six clinics with a 70% gross profit with 4 million, 536 million. Next. Thank you very much for your time. And this is a project that uh, I will hope that you can help me to land it and, and find more in, in investments. Thank you. Raul, thank you so much. You have me excited because I'm experiencing um, what you're talking about. Uh, judges, uh, do we have any questions for Raul? Hi, uh, very quickly, this is Gleb. So uh, is this a patented technology uh, or I mean, or, um... Uh, uh, do you have this somewhere in the uh, FDA approval pipeline? Uh, what's uh, what can you tell us about this? No, uh, actually, this is like a know-how technique, which is already uh, the knowledge is there. I'm, my 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 background is science, so uh, the, you you put together all the pieces. It's like doing a a, a car, you know. Uh, everybody buys an engine, a transmission from different brands. So what I've been doing is putting together all the pieces and. They don't figure out how to put it and, 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 and deliver as a product, you know? So it is a, this is an integratable problem because uh, uh, it, it is more regarding also of the testosterone, high testosterone on men. So basically we need to control that and also help the follicle to be strained and have more uh, uh, capacity to blood flow and the oxygen. So, he can, so it can win the war with the, with the testosterone, which is the, the root of the, the, the the root of the problem. Okay. Thank you. Um, I have a qu quick question. Tell us about your team because it's very important. This is the product you, you said it twice that you have science background, but what makes you to be an expert in, um, in the field and create a solution? Well, um, I'm, 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 I'm the only one. I'm, I don't have a team as, as, a, as a team. I read a lot. I have uh, doing a lot of research, scientific paper research. I, I have been exposed to other clinics that have been done something not similar, but something uh, like kind of, but not in this approach. So I, I have been uh, a lot of uh, contact with science and uh, common sense also that this has to be uh, Obviously, good, uh, good, good, good science is good business, but has to be really qualified to be done. So I don't have any FDA approval because this is this is not a final product. It is more a technique, and it is a know-how in order to develop the results. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so much, Raúl, um, and thank you, judges. Uh, thank you. Excellent. So next up, uh, we have Kevin Posadas with Green Wave. Thank you. Let's see. Do we have Kevin with us?
All right. If Kevin, um, if Kevin is here, uh, we will circle back. But since it looks like there might be a technology thing going on, do we have Hussein? Hussein here was um, Sakrina. Sakrina. Hussein. Saw him earlier, so probably I don't know what's happening. We can proceed to the next presenter then. Perfect. Mm -hmm. We, I see, I see, Kev, I see Kevin Posadas on here, but I'm not sure if uh, you hear us, Kevin, or let's keep going. Yeah, no, no problem, John. Let's just go to the go to the next one, and we can wrap back around. Awesome, Michael, with all hands on deck. Okay. <laughs> and it's soon as we have Michael's deck up. I know we had to skip over a bit, then we will he'll get the show on the road. All right. Uh, let's see, Diana, do you have the deck up? It looks like we lost it. Uh, no, uh, Michael was supposed to um, share his screen. Got it. Got it. Michael, do you have it? If you want to share that with us, we're ready for it. All right. Let's see. Oh, hold on. What happened? I lost. You know, it's the, this, this is a, I feel like this is a daily occurrence with Zoom. We're all accustomed to it. <laughs> all right. There we go. Awesome. Can you guys see it? Yes. We can. Okay. Hello. Oh, wait. Start from the first. Okay. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Michael Apollonio. Uh, the name of my brand is All Hands on Deck. Um, I'm actually in a garage, uh, just like the way Apple and Microsoft and uh, Google first started. So hopefully this is a great way for me to start too. Um, so All Hands on Deck is a lifestyle brand for creatives, secondhand clothing resellers, and environmentally conscious people that enjoy collaborating in order to achieve growth and success. Um, All Hands on Deck has been involved in secondhand fashion, event creating, management, and consulting. We've had events uh, nationally in Washington, DC, and are looking forward to do something here in San Francisco. Our main purpose is to change the fashion industry and improve consumption behaviors. What is the problem? So pollution is the problem. As consumers, we should become more aware of the environment and how our behaviors and consumption affects it. So why now? So fast fashion companies that you see in malls like Forever 21, Zara, H&M have been causing a negative impact to our environment. Um, these fashion companies are responsible for about 10% of humanity's carbon emission, which is more than the amount of international flights and maritime shipping combined. Um, things that we could do to change this is starting to be aware of how we consume and also by shopping at secondhand stores like Goodwill or the Salvation Army. And by doing this, you could also create your own sense of identity and in fashion by shopping at these places. Most of the items are usually under $10 and on rare occasion can cost up to 30 bucks. So the market of the resale industry is worth about $24 billion. The evaluation uh, for growth in 10 years is estimated to be at $64 billion. My goal is to grow my own e-commerce and um, spread out to companies like Etsy, Depop, eBay, Mercari, Poshmark, and also to consult other vintage resellers and teach them how to build their own websites on sites like Wix, Squarespace, and Shopify. We're at about 15 seconds, Michael. Okay, my call to action 
is I'm looking for mentors for guidance to help me scale the business to eventually have my own brick and mortar store. Uh, any partnerships or collaborators to help find local venues or markets to host future events and just basically change our behaviors and fashion consumption by shopping for secondhand clothing. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so much, Michael. Judges, questions? All right. Yeah, we're going to have uh, Lauren and Stacy uh, ask a couple questions. So go ahead, my friends. And thank you, Michael, for your presentation. Yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead and start. Um, yeah, I, I do a lot of vintage shopping myself. So I, I totally uh, get what you're after here. But I'm curious, uh, how exactly are you going to change our behaviors in uh, consumer fashion? So the how I plan to change it is by popularizing it instead of, um, you know, ha having people shop at places like Forever 21 or Urban Outfitters. Uh, I plan to help popularize it by just creating a culture and, you know, creating your own identity through secondhand clothing. Okay. And one follow up on that. How, how exactly are you, you going to, uh, what's the first step towards creating that culture? Um, so what I've done um, already is I've created an event called the Really Big Pop-Up where we, um, where I gathered a bunch of vintage collectors in Washington DC and brought them all together for an event just so people could see that, you know, secondhand clothing is actually cool now it's very trendy and if you notice a lot of these jackets here a lot of uh companies like forever 21 and h&m are actually copying a lot of these styles and um you know i just want to show them that it's cool to wear secondhand clothing michael can you talk a little bit about your um your user acquisition strategy? How will you get users? Um, how will people find out about you? And then how will you convert people finding out about you into customers? So uh, what I did in the past for the events is I found customers slash uh, resellers through platforms like Instagram, YouTube. What I did was I contacted them and I allowed them to promote the event themselves. And, you know, by having multiple people promote, then, you know, we're able to tap into their network and other people's network and then all combine into one event. And, um, you know, just by organic growth, really. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Michael. Thank you, judges. All right. And I think Kevin is back. So Kevin. he might be ready. Mm -hmm. All right. Kevin. I am. How's it going, guys? Kevin is live. And then if we will get that deck back for you, Kevin, and then you'll be able to kick it off. Yes, please. Thank you so much. Yes. I feel like I always will make announcements, even when I'm running my own thing. Yeah, no, maybe we should pull up the, the deck. All the things that are so easy in person, there's these technology, technological barriers. Thanks everybody for your patience. Hey, Kevin, are you sharing your screen? Hello, can you say that again? Kevin, are you, are you, do you have your deck? Are you gonna be able to share that with us? You're on mute. Uh, I, I believe it, I, I sent it to, to Vivian. Um, yeah, it was with us, but uh, uh, it's sure. mm -hmm. um, I, and thank I, you, everybody, for your yeah. patience as uh, we link up virtually across the city. <laughs> awesome. Perfect. Yeah. All right, Kevin. Yeah. No, it's good. It's good. I'm, I'm chilling. Okay. So how's it going, everyone? My name is Kevin Posadas. Our company's name is Green Wave. Our mission is to reduce humanity's carbon footprint through innovative and exciting ideas. Our first goal is to revolutionize the recycling process for homes, restaurants, schools, and other, hold on, how can I, uh, how, how do I switch the screens to the next slide? Just say next. Okay, okay. So our mission is to reduce humanity's carbon footprint through innovative and exciting ideas. Our first goal is to revolutionize the recycling process for homes, restaurants, schools, and other institutions. Next, 
So the world is in a recycling crisis. Every day, 1 billion, 440 million plastic bottles are sold globally, and almost 80% of that will end up in our forests or oceans. Americans alone dumped 242 million pounds of plastic into our ocean last year, and California is in a recycling crisis as half of all centers have closed in the past four years. And this is all because of two reasons. The first is the inconvenience of having to go to a recycling center, sorting your materials, and standing in line for small amounts of money. The second is the lack of accessibility. As more centers close, more people are left without options to take advantage of their recycling. And these two factors have led to America's declining recycling rate of only 34.7%. We are solving this next. We are solving this by becoming the world's first mobile recycling service. We go directly to our users, pick up their recyclables, and we pay them a percentage of the value. The other percentage goes to the driver and the company. An example of how we're doing this is with single family homes. We sell them eco-friendly 50 gallon bins for their plastic and aluminum. Once they're full, they contact us, we pick them up and they are paid shortly after. Next, our next phase for growing our company is developing an app that will streamline our contact with the users. It will be able to track their progress in earnings and also track their progress in combating climate change through their recycling. The market validation for our company next is a 7.3 million people in the Bay Area and a 6.1 million servable homes, all while considering the nation's rate of recycling of only 34%. Our go next, our go-to market strategy, strategy is through social media such as Facebook and Instagram, direct mail for homeowners and landlords, and community events. Next, our financial overview is currently a monthly recurring revenue of $803. Our expenses are currently $540 on our truck and we have a net income of 16.7 week over week growth and a net margin of 48.9%. Our team, next. Our team is made up of myself, my co-founder, Mark Bandelin, and we're looking for an investment of $50,000 to develop our application. See, we believe that by making, engaging our community into recycling and making it personal to everybody, we can bring an excitement to recycling that has never been seen before. And through that excitement, we can all change the world one bottle at a time. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you very much. And judges, do we have questions okay. for Kevin? Uh, thank you, Kevin. Very good presentation. Very uh, comprehensive and informative in a given amount of time. Um, thanks for including go-to-market strategy. I think that's a real important aspect um, to have uh, for probably all presenters. Uh, more specifically, what's your fundraising strategy? Well, you mentioned that, um, well, other than this today, uh, what other venues are you planning to pursue? Well, we've actually done other competitions like this um, last year, th thanks to the uh, help of this um, Center for Entrepreneurship. We actually went to Newport Beach. We we're able to pitch in front of 600 people. But right now we're looking for investors and we're doing that through, through sites such as Indiegogo and um, through Angel Investors, Lauren Taylor could hopefully help us out with something like that. So that's our, that's our real strategy. We're really in the process of, of gaining, um, you know, putting ourselves out there so people see what, know what we do and if, if they support our movement, they can, uh, you know, fund us and, and help us with that. That's good. I think crowdsourcing, uh, crowdfunding rather is a really good way to go. Uh, you may also want to consider some angel networks. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I, I have a question. So can you uh, guide me? You pick, so let's say you put uh, the beans in uh, people's homes, right? And then they, and then you come and collect it. Where does it go next? And, um, how, how does Absolutely. it work? Who yeah, pays that's, you and that's for a great what? Question. Mm -hmm. That's a great question. So we're basically a middleman. So instead of people having to take their recycling to a recycling center, that you know, sometimes aren't the best conditions, sometimes they can be dirty. And, uh, you know, people just don't want to do that. Like I said, inconvenience. We take it to the recycling center and they pay us the total value of their materials. And then we pay the user a percentage of that value. It incentivizes the user because, you know, money, unfortunately, is one of the big incentivizers nowadays. And, you know, this is something that we see can grow, especially in this time of, of, of the pandemic that we're in. A lot of businesses need extra money. You know, they're struggling with this. Once, you know, the economy starts to recover, they can get a little bit extra money from doing this. We have one restaurant who makes a, an average of $70 a week. And that's, you know, um, $280 a month. And that's helping their bottom line. And I know that in this time, it'd be perfect for a lot of restaurants. That's, that, that's, that's how we do it. The follow-up question is then, if you're saying that the restaurant is your customer, but your go-to-market strategy is seems like you're not B2B, but B2C. So there is a disconnect. So who are your primary customer? 
That's a great question. Yeah, our primary customers right now are not only restaurants. We also serve, we are actually serving 50 um, residential homes as, as, as we speak. And uh, that's been one of our most successful areas. We actually have helped people recycle almost a thousand pounds of weight already to date. So we're also helping, we're, we're in, in the process of uh, getting schools into this. So this is something that's not just gonna be for restaurants, it's gonna be for, um, for all, all, all types of people. Wonderful, thank you. Thank you, Kevin, for the presentation, judges for the dialogue. Thank you guys, appreciate it so much. Wonderful. All right, uh, at this point, uh, is Hussein in, um, in the room? Are you, would you be ready to go? If think not, we, I think we lost him. All righty, then it looks like we have got uh, Michelle, Michelle Barbara Goodman with Sundown Traditions, which we have up. Thank you, Jonathan. Thank you, Professor Vivian and uh, panelists. My name is Michelle Goodman, and our company is called Sundown Traditions. We envision a world free from hate and genocide by promoting social good that increases empathy and hope. So Our debut product is a remembrance candle. We believe that small actions can make a difference. I married into a Jewish family, and a couple of years ago at Yom Kippur, while lighting memorial candles for our loved ones, I wondered, why isn't there a candle for victims of the Holocaust? Next. Next, please. Thank you. Lighting a candle has long been a symbol of hope. I imagined creating a candle that is meaningful and beautiful. I'm so sorry, that, that's fine right there, thank you. A candle that would invite everyone, regardless of faith or heritage, to remember the importance of the Holocaust. So I started to do some research and what I found was terribly disturbing. Current data shows a growing percentage of citizens across the globe deny, dispute, or simply do not know what happened while 6 million Jews were victims of the Holocaust, millions more were targeted. And the Holocaust is wide, widely considered the worst atrocity in human history. It is more important than ever to embrace truth and actively remember. Next, thank you, next. So who are the target markets? Our candle appeals to socially conscious consumers and members of blended families like me. Descendants of Holocaust survivors and members of the Jewish community will feel especially connected to our message, as well as organizations with shared values. Next. There is a sizable domestic market for our candle. Almost 8 million are members of social advocacy groups. America is also home to more than 7.5 million Jews. And last year, over a million and a half people visited the United States Holocaust Museum. There are hundreds of organizations nationwide that we might partner with. Next, Simon Sinek, author of Start With Why, says people don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. Our candle presents a unique customer value proposition with a compelling mission. Celebrity influencers will help strengthen our message and product visibility. Through digital media strategies and third-party channels, we can reach target markets and use our customer database to email promotions and updates on charitable proceeds. Next. Our closest competitor is the yellow candle, presented in a disposable tin, which focuses primarily on the Jewish community through fundraising programs. Sundown Traditions product is similar in style to popular decorative candles. Our message speaks to a broad audience and is an open invitation promoting cross-cultural action. Next. 15 seconds left. Thank you. With plans to launch these this fall, these financial pro are projections. Our goal is to sell enough candles to reach $15,000 in donations and a 62% growth rate by the end of the second year. As founder, I have 20 years of professional experience exercising my creativity. I read my first survivor's memoir when I was 10 and have been trying to understand the Holocaust ever since. My spouse and business partner Jody has 30 years of success as a promoter in the entertainment industry and we're thrilled to have Lori Puccinality, Puccinality our top advisor, a media, PR, and branding powerhouse. Next. And we're actually at time. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Judges. Could you please just post my last slide? Thank you so much. <laughs> Judges, questions? Questions? Yeah. yeah. Uh, or go, ahead. Oh, go ahead, Warren. Go ahead. It's fine. Go ahead. Okay. So um, you, uh, oh, 
you wanted to bring this part, uh, product to market um, in part by uh, celebrity influencers, yes. but I didn't see that in your financials. So how exactly were you going to do that? Um, well, there are a lot of celebrities who are um, open about their, their commitments and what they believe in. And I think just by reaching out to them, uh, I'm, I'm hoping that they will believe in the importance of our message and perhaps promote it on their social media. Sure, I understand. Uh, one thing that I do deal with uh, every day at Indiegogo, I recommend uh, be careful with reaching out to influencers because they can eat up a lot of your time and bandwidth mm -hmm. and it helps at the margins. So that's something okay. that I would also caution. So. Thank you, Stacey. Michelle, can you talk a little bit more about um, the, the customer and the problem? I'm trying to connect the, the customer to the, the problem and the solution and not sure that they're connecting um, in terms sure. of how you measure the impact of the candle as a solution to that problem. Well, I think the candle um, has three ways that it can make a difference by personally increasing empathy, just reminding people of the importance of uh, the lessons from the Holocaust. But also um, we'd like to have an awareness campaign called Light is Hope that, will, that we will promote on social media and PR opportunities. And then finally, um, you know, a lot of recent data shows that people are motivated to spend their money on products that have a purpose. And so a portion of the proceeds from our candle sales will go directly to museums and organizations that support education. Does that answer your question? Did I answer um, your question, Lauren? It, it, it answers my question in terms of how you're thinking about it. Yep, thank you. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Jessica. You. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you. Excellent. Looks like next up, we have Rafika with Acoustica. Yes, hello, everyone. Should I, should I share my screen? Or are you guys gonna run it? Let's see if Diana has your file on deck. Diana, yeah. I, but I had last minute change, so I prefer to share my screen if that's okay. All righty, if, if that works for you, take it away. Yeah, let me see. Okay. Is that okay now? Yes. Yeah. That looks great. Yeah. Hi everyone. It's Trifika, and I'm gonna um, I'm gonna talk about my little idea. It's called Acoustica. So it's Acoustica is a music app that you can reach in everywhere as long as you have internet connection. And how I came up with this idea and why music? Because I was a music journalist and and I was write about music a lot. And as a personally, I think that the best to criticize the song and artist is to reach the pure music. And it's the, and I think the best way to reach it with the acoustic music. Uh, so that's why I came up with this idea because I was looking for videos and songs, but I couldn't find it. And I thought that it's gonna be good for a person like me and other people. And my mission statement is to basically create an innovative um, app for the music industry because I know that so many people are interested in music and their lifestyle is music and they're looking for options and we live in the global world and we have so many we have so many options we have so many channels that we can reach and people different types of people so I believe that the I can find like people like me. So that's why I came up with this idea. And my target market is active young business person who likes to listen, like let's say Bob Dylan one day after the work and I'm professional youth, like geek who is like in the room and high schoolers just like hate everything and listen to music and uh, mid age and senior intellectuals who is like, who was participate um, best um, fast music festivals. I think they're gonna in it. And this is how my app looks. It's really basic because, you know, we're looking for pure music and it's a basic app as well. 
And um, you can see the artist page. I picked the Bob Dylan because I love him. And you can see the songs and how the song is long and song name and it's, it's a basic look. And of course, how I'm gonna make money about that. Um, with that, I am looking, I think first it's gonna be a subscribers and I, I will have a, like three different type of subscribers an elite member, upper member, an easy member. Elite member can reach the videos and the lyrics and everything. And upper member is most like, just like better quality. They can skip as much as they want and the special playlist for them. And easy member is like a acoustic radio that they can play. Excellent, we're at 15 seconds. Yes, and it was it. And um, in this, Today, I'm looking for um, actually mentorship, not founding or anything, or uh, because I think I'm really, really beginning right now. But I believe my idea and I believe my passion. And I know there is people out there that believe, my, believe the same thing as I believe. So as a, with a good mentor, I think I can improve myself better and I can reach the people as much as, as, much as I can. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you very much. Uh, judges. So thank you, Rafika. So how would you compare yourself with Spotify and what, uh, what makes your value proposition uh, unique? Uh, Spotify is a great platform for the listeners. They have so many options and they're more worldwide, but they don't have live um, version of songs that much. So this is what I'm going to do. The acoustic music mostly comes with a live version. And maybe we'll, I will ask the artist and make, they can record their live, op, uh, their acoustic version. And they can release their album in an acoustic way. Because this is what they do when they're pr uh, promoting their albums and their songs. And so it's, it's, but it's only stay in YouTube and like um, several platforms. They can, people not prefer to listen to videos while they're going away or in the car or just walking. So this is what makes different me, uh, different acoustic from Spotify. Thank you. Yes, and, and I have questions. How will you get that, all that acoustic music you said to reach out to, uh, to musicians? Just imagine yourself like you are sitting here and you have to reach out. How much time do you actually have to reach out? Where you will find their information? Uh, well, how are you going to actually, you know, just get me through the process? How are you going to get the music on your platform? Okay. So I want to start with, I want to uh, go over this on my story because I was a music journalist and I have to reach all this songs right and i went to youtube and soundcloud and spotify sometimes and i can find the things but it takes the time so first step going to be like i will collecting and ask for um permission to artists and it will be a long process i know and uh, first we're going to do that and second after i think the acoustic are going to be white um uh, the beginning the bigger platform we can we can deal with their managers. This is what I'm thinking. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you so much uh, for the dialogue and for the presentation. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Next up on deck, we have Jonathan Chong with me. Jonathan, are you ready? Testing, testing. There we go. Um, can I use my own pitch deck actually? I did some updating. Go for it. Okay. Here. Sorry, this lets me time it how I had it. Uh, okay. Ready? My name is Jonathan Chong. Um, I'm going to be doing a little bit different, uh, something a little bit different today. Uh, after consultation with Vivian. Um, and not really believing in my projects. Um, I thought I'd pitch myself and where I am in hopes of finding collaborators or uh, possible projects I can work on. Um, so I'm a former business owner. Uh, I did real estate for about 13 years. Um, that was buying, fixing up, 
and renting and then um, getting income from the both appreciation and from the rental. Uh, I did all of it myself. I did from the beginning of strategizing on the price and on marketing and uh, hiring contractors, uh, sticking on budget, the whole nine yards. And I did that for about 13 years. Uh, a couple of years ago, I decided to do something more meaningful uh, in my mind. And I started taking coding classes. Uh, that's what led me to CCSF and the entrepreneurship uh, program here. Um, Inverting my slides here. This is me. Um, that's what I'll be asking for is leads and um, referrals. Sorry. So I've been studying um, for a couple of years, uh, mainly in Python and data analysis, uh, including statistics, you know, brushing up on that database stuff. I'm still fairly new. Obviously, I don't have a full CS degree, but um, my initial bachelor's degree way back, you know, decades ago is in chemistry. So I kind of have a firm STEM background that I've had through my life. Uh, this is my experience. Uh, I'm looking for um, people to collaborate with on a project uh, and, and or gain more skills with. So that could be, you know, a nonprofit in town. That could be just someone else who wants a pair program. Um, I'm starting to look at positions. I'm kind of on the borderline of, uh, I think, getting entry level front ends or, uh, or like easy back end stuff. And, but I, anyway, so I'm continuing to study, but part of my presentation here is to put my name out there for people who are interested in collaborating and, and or who might know of you know, good ways to find open positions because I'm starting. We're at 30 seconds, Jonathan. Sure. Uh, let's see, so looking for a team or mentorship, looking for something in the real world. Uh, I'm available now since I'm, I don't have summer plans and until uh, next fall, uh, I'm up in the air. These are examples of what I'd be looking for. Uh, again, I'm asking for leads to projects, partners, uh, or actual jobs. And this is my contact info. Perfect, thank you, Jonathan, we're at time. Excellent. Thank you. Okay. Jonathan, what great timing. Um, how open are you to learning additional programming languages? Uh, very open. I consider myself like a late beginner or early intermediate with Python. That's my main. Um, and, but I'm not stuck in that. Like I think a lot of the course of principles transfer. Mm -hmm. In terms of um, data related projects, how comfortable would you feel looking at a platform and proposing some um, uh, ways to parse data that might help the client that they haven't realized yet? Um, so I, I'm not sure I don't know this. My main uh, lack or weakness I think at CCSF is the lack of collaboration with people and the lack of seeing uh, what methods are out there for any given uh, project and how and how they progress. So hence my, you know, starting to look outside school classes and academia uh, for these things. So I, I can't tell you a lot about data science in that sense. In that sense. Sure. Um, well, you got 30 seconds left. I have um, I have some needs right now. So let's let's connect. I would love to um, uh, pair you with a couple of teams that I'm working with right now. Great, love to talk to you. Great. Yeah, good work out there, Jonathan. Thank you. All right, thanks team. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Jonathan. All right, next up, we have got um, Jorga with StudHub, it looks like. Almost uh, can you start perfectly hearing? pronounced. <laughs> Sorry, could you, uh, and Jonathan, we need um, to, to relinquish oh, the screen. Of course, and I'll mute myself too. <laughs> Thank you. And back over to StudHub. Okay, so we can start. Hi, everyone. My name is Jorga, and I have a vision to create a purpose-driven community for students and young professionals in my home country, Lithuania. Next slide, please. 
so for that reason, I'm creating Stat Hub. It will be based on sustainable co-living principles driven by strong bonds and the community. And I'm already excited about the long-term friendships and memories and network of support system, which will be created in that place. Next slide, please. We will provide our customers with tech equipped, fully furnished and hassle-free uh, lifestyle where everyone will be seen, heard and accepted. Next, please. Our plan is to build co-living spaces exploiting Use containers, it's school functional, cost-effective and environmentally friendly. Next, please. We promise convenient location, private space, common areas, uh, like-minded community, caretaking staff, security, hassle-free move-in, online booking and a good price value ratio. Next, please. So why now? Uh, the trends are in favor of the living creation first because we all experience that housing prices are consuming a big portion of our paychecks. Second, the home ownership rate for millennial generation is lower than that of the parents and grandparents at the same age. And third, single households in Lithuania are skyrocketing than ever before in history. And finally, I think because of the new COVID-19, uh, in 25% of population in Lithuania is currently under in, uh, unemployed with more than 70% feeling financially insecure. And I think this will lead even to a greater necessity for affordable housing. Next, please. So Stud Hub will reach people in the educational period of life through collaboration with universities and high schools. We will participate in trade fairs for students and I will heavily use digital marketing and public relations to let our potential customers to know about us. And I believe that once we are in business, no one will want to leave our community. Next, please. So far, there is only one competitor in Lithuania targeting the same customer segment. So there's room for us in this market for sure. Next, please. Uh, as you see, we will be charging a fixed 350 euro rate per room per month. Maybe it sounds absurdly cheap and lo low price for Bay Area, but it makes sense for real estate market in Lithuania. Next, please. We're at 30 seconds. And I plan to explain, expand Stud Hub by the end of 2025 to 10 locations, building 100 units, hiring 10 employees, and earning around 420,000 of euros every year with 300, 3 million of investments in need. But to get there, I need mentorship. Thank you very much. Wonderful. Thank you very much, Yoga. And judges, do we have questions for Yoga? Uh, hi. Uh, so, yeah, thank you. Um, very interesting. So you uh, you are looking for mentorship at this point, right? So that's pretty much your main goal. Um, how how do you see this um, this business uh, evolving essentially post COVID nineteen? Because you have to kind of account for that, especially given that uh, well, Airbnb is basically shot. You know, so there's an opportunity as well as there's a there's a challenge there in that segment. Um, so um, what is, what's, what's your idea? You know, because the need won't disappear. Everyone needs uh, affordable housing. And I think because we are stuck now in this environment and like talking to computers, <laughs> who computers? I think we are so much uh, missing like conversations, like face to face, you no know, hugging, so, so on. So I think this opportunity won't disappear. And we have like really good, vision for this business to, to evolve finally, because in Lithuania, as I said, it's quite new. There's some competitors who are starting involving, uh, big names are coming, but they are not are targeting uh, young professionals and students. So I think uh, because the need is there and the supply is like so low, I think I will prosper in this business. Great, right. well, certainly yeah. Would so. Yeah, my question would be is uh, what what are your potential customers are doing now? How do they solve that problem that you're gonna be solving for them? So now they are living in dorms in Lithuania, which, which are very outdated. Uh, people are refusing to go there, even it's cheap, but people want to have a normal lifestyle, you know, like, uh, so sometimes like they are belonging, belong, uh, depending on their parents and parents, uh, are paying for their co living in apartments, but living in an apartment, uh, also you don't have like those, that society, like you can 
collaborate with or share your ideas. So even like I'm the oldest one in the family. So all my cousins, because I was living back in the capital city, they were calling me and asking like, can you refer to someone like who can rent a space for us because they don't get uh, a space in dorms. So there's a need, huge need for that. So I think it just like, you have to go live, you have to go um, start branding yourself and like just showing about yourself, talking about yourself. And I think they will come to me. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, you you know, real estate is it's really big big deal. There are a lot of like companies that are that are primarily focused on real estate. Why do you think they haven't come up with that idea? Uh, we're at time for this. Sorry. We're actually over time for questions. So should I answer or no? Um, I think we need to move on just to keep the time consistent. But if you want to sync up um, afterwards, make sure that you share information that way. Okay, thank you. Yeah. All right, so next, Evelina with Dermalove. We're excited to hear from you. Evelina? Yeah, can you hear me? Fabulous, hi. Yeah, great. <laughs> um, so I'm Evelina, I'm 25 years old and I'm from Stockholm, Sweden. I'm pitching my business idea Dermalove to you in hopes to find mentorship and to help me on my entrepreneurial path. Next slide, please. Dermalove.com is an online beauty coach that offers a personalized skincare analysis as well as high quality skincare products and skin friendly makeup that is suited for the individual need. Our mission is to make professional skincare simple and available to anyone. I've been working as a makeup artist and skincare consultant most of my adult life. And I noticed that most of my clients were struggling with the products they were using and didn't have the how to, to tell what the problem was. And they also didn't want to spend uh, money on expensive treatments. Dermalove is a website where customers can go in, make a quick skin test so that we can recommend products and specifically tailor a routine for that person all in one place. The skin test consists, next slide please. The skin test consi consists of 17 questions and takes about eight to 12 minutes to complete. The questions cover everything from determining your skin type uh, to what your products, what products you wanna be recommended, if you prefer vegan, organic, whatever it might be, uh, to how much time you wanna spend on your skincare and of course, how much money you wanna spend. We target men and women between about 25 and 45 who are working professionals located in larger cities. They typically have a busy lifestyle and prefer smart solutions in their lives. I believe our top advantage is our data-driven approach. The skin test allows us to thoroughly get to know our customers, which we also hope to use in the future to hopefully develop our own product line. The beauty industry is growing faster than ever it's right now, it's, it was valued at 532 billion. Um, next slide, please. In 2019, and it's estimated to grow by about 50% in the next three years. Next slide, please. As an online retailer, we plan to make money from the products that we sell, but this could of course change in the future as I'm in a very, very early stage of this product. Right about 30 um, seconds, Evelina. Next slide, please. To make this run smoothly, I estimate to need a team of about 10 people to begin with, an operations team, a marketing team, and probably right now the most important, the developers to help build the back end and front end of the website. Thank you very much, and I'm happy to answer your questions. Thank you. And judges, questions for Evelina. Evelina, that was a great presentation. Thank you. I'm wondering if you can tell us more about um, your competitors and specifically Curology comes to mind and how your uh, system might compare to something like that. Yeah, um, I, I have looked into Curology, but I feel like many, um, many of the competitors doing similar things. Uh, first, the tests are not very thorough in my opinion. Um, they're not as, 
I feel like it's a lot of uh, focus on um, medical skincare, and this is more the aesthetics of skincare. Um, I feel that if I, I don't want to to start a website because I'm not a dermatologist, I'm not. But I know the difference that skincare can make, and so I would like to focus on that. Got it. Thank you. Yeah, I was also curious too. Um, how do you plan on reaching your target audience? Well, now I heard you say before that influencers is not a very good idea, but um, yeah, it's a little different for beauty. But nonetheless, yeah, yeah, generally, not. I feel like um, I actually have a complete marketing plan for this product. I feel like I'm at a at a further stage um, on the marketing side than I am on the business side at this point. Um, I. My plan is to reach out to micro influencers to begin with. Um, I feel like they have a very strong loyalty um, to their customers or, um, or the other way around. Um, and yeah, I, I feel like that would be a good, a good strategy for me. Yeah. And just so you know, uh, whenever you have a more mature product in that event, um, Let's see, their rangeme.com could be a good option for you to populate your website with product. Okay, thank you so much. Wonderful. Thank you, everybody. Thank you very much. Uh, let's see. Next, it looks like we have a dual team, if I'm reading this correctly. We have Melvin and Jordan with uh, Kupika. Hey, thanks, John. Hey, everyone. How's it going? My name is Melvin Franklin. And I'm here with my co-founder, Jonathan Wong. We're going to present to you a new look, an alternative looking for um, traditional in-home cookware. Next slide, please. So the company purpose right now, um, modern single family homes all use cookware, pots and pans, saucepans, you name it. Um, what we're trying to do for a company purpose is the traditional stovetop cookware, it doesn't really offer much. It's a lot of inconvenience to come with traditional cookware. And when it comes to utensils, the utensils that come along with the um, product, they're not allow utensil storage that eliminates and reduces contamination. Next slide. So a lot of customer problems when you buy uh, traditional cookware, you have low quality, a lot of inconvenience. Uh, it's really, co really very costly. You don't have a lot of, a lot of um, basis for actually trying to find a very low cost, high quality brand. And we look to eliminate that. Next slide. So the solution. So the actual traditional cookware, or we're going to say saucepan, uh, it doesn't really provide a healthy uh, sanitary, sanitary alternative to traditional cookware by minimizing food preparation with proper utensil storage. We offer a solution to that by actually incorporating a utensil storage into your actual saucepan that other brands do not incorporate. Next slide. Right now, what you're looking at right now is the actual top view and left view of our actual um, saucepan. So what you're looking at right now is the actual stovetop modified version of a saucepan with actual utensil storage on the left and, um, left and right side. Now, this is your typical traditional pot and pan, pretty basic. So what we do is offer you something to put your, your uh, utensils and storage on. Now, a lot of people, when they cook and they stir, they have no place to put your uh, utensils. They actually have, they have to look for it, probably um, storage. They had to put it somewhere else, a napkin, a plate or something like that. And that actually, actually eliminates a lot of cook time and preparation. Next slide. So why now? Um, we're going through a pandemic. Contamination, consciousness, hygienic consciousness is at all time high. And right now, safety measures are paramount. So you gotta think when you put your utensils down on a surface, it can be contaminated with a lot of things, bacteria, a lot of viruses, salmonella, Right now, COVID-19 is really like really just aggravating a lot of people. And it's, it's a very deadly, um, very deadly virus. And you know, with, with that, we need more safer practices for actually cookware because these utensils that you use, they actually go from the surface to your pot, your saucepan, and your body, which is you know basically a no-no. Melvin, we're at 20 seconds. Okay, next slide. A revenue model is usually um big box store like Amazon, Walmart. Target, if we could um, branch out to an e-commerce website, that'd be great. Next site. Um, the team, myself and John, um, Jordan Wong, we, uh, you want to talk to us? There's the emails, give us a holler. Thank you. 
Excellent. Thank you very much, Melvin and Jordan. Uh, judges, do we have questions? Okay, well, I'll start. So uh, uh, thanks, um, Melvin, Franklin, uh, so, uh, uh, and John. So uh, have you actually, do you actually produce those or this is an idea you're hoping to implement, eventually start manufacturing somewhere? Um, Tell me a little bit about the product itself. I mean, it's a, it's a cute idea, and you know, and, and thank you for including the <laughs> cute um, kind of uh, uh, sketch there. So, um, uh, tell us a little bit about the product. The yeah, so product. for the photograph, it was, a, it was a sketch, a little rough. I do mean rough. The no, uh, the, the product itself is actually does it is not made yet. It's a prototype idea. So, what we're looking for, I call it actually, is actually included to um, funding and research and development in-home cookware and the funding we can receive and the money and revenue we make off of that we can actually go and transition from in-home cookware to an industry revenue to the actual restaurant industry for okay. second generation um, products oh okay uh, then uh, follow-up question like first of all i didn't understand the problem and solution did not match so the problem you were saying that it's a, a low quality uh cookware uh, and yeah. then yes you were talking about uh, in inconvenience and then the solution was you don't even have the the pot yet so you're not really your solution you're not saying that it's going to be a high quality a pot itself but it's more of a convenience type so i thought that you might you might want to think about how you present your problem so that your solution matches matches that um, but then now you just mentioned the restaurants, but the restaurants, they do have, that would not be a problem if you go to the restaurants. So how would you, who are your customers? And I do want to ask uh, it to be concise because I'm looking at the timing and what we've got left and we're very tight on time. Yeah. Who is, who are your customers? Uh, the customers are pretty much traditional, um, single family homes. If you can actually, if you have hands and you can hold a pot and stir Modern families, single family homes, anyone who, who can cook, who would like to cook, those are um, target market. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. All right, just moving on to keep the flow going. Do we have Todd Greenberg? Oh, no, it looks like I've got Alana Kamen actually with, as we can see, Faye is up. Alana? Hi, yes. Um, is it actually okay if I control it on my end? Diana, um, I can get that for you. Let me go ahead and share your end. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Get in here. Okay. Hello. Good afternoon. My name is Alana Kamen. I am the founder and CEO of Faye, which is a handmade um, organic natural skincare line. I have always felt like skincare was something that just was a bit overwhelming. You see all these different products, these different lines, marketing, multi-step, um, or rather multi-product skincare that can feel kind of overwhelming, a bit daunting and off-putting. So I decided to take matters into my own hands. So Faye is going to be organic, handmade, all-natural skincare. These products will be multi-beneficial, so that will alleviate the need for one to purchase multiple products to take care of their skin. Of course, you will be feeling very good. Uh, these products will benefit your body, your senses, and elevate your mood. Alana, and, Alana, yeah. I'm so yeah. sorry. We can't see your screen. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, I'm sorry to interrupt you. I just, I, I'm afraid we're missing something really. Yeah. Important that you want to? Ah, okay. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. So I just wanted to. Yep. Thank you for saying that. Yeah, um, thank you for pausing. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Sorry, Diana. I'm not sure why it's not working. Um, you're not able to control Diana's module, so she has to control it. So if you don't have yeah, your that's deck, okay. If she can just share it, yeah. Cool, perfect. I don't, Diana, I sorry, could you share that time. again? Thank you. Um, you can skip ahead a couple slides. I realize I'm on a time crunch here. Okay, so. Yes, so um, as of 2018, the personal care market surrounding organic and natural beauty was at a $13.3 billion 
market size, and it's expected to grow by 9.4% over the next five years, which goes to show that, you know, natural skincare beauty isn't going anywhere anytime soon. Next slide. Fate is going to be targeting customers that are seeking well-rounded, simple skincare routines that include um, very high quality ingredients, supporters of women-owned and Black-owned businesses, and of course, those that do consume organic, all-natural, and ethical personal care products. Next slide. Faye will make money through direct sales. Next slide. Using um, brick-and-mortar stores, also e-commerce. So um, Etsy, um, Shopify, and other online markets. And of course, giving, taking into account today's climate, assuming that we get back to having fun outdoor events, farmers markets, craft fairs, cultural events, and we'll reach customers using different forms of social media, podcast interviews, um, and also just teaching classes around skincare. These are some um, organic natural product lines that are out today. We have True Botanicals, which is a bit more on the high-end luxurious side. This brand is backed by Celebrity Ambassadors, in the middle is Herbivore, a vegan natural uh, product line. And then we have Lush, arguably one of the more popular handmade skincare lines and has a bit of a cult following. Um, next slide, about please. 20 seconds. Perfect. So I am still in the very early stages. Um, so today I'm simply asking for mentorship and uh, business coaching. And thank you so much. Fabulous. Thank you. And thank you for handling the technology <laughs> thing very well. <laughs> and for everyone else handling that with us. Uh, thank you. Judges, questions? Alana, that was great. Thank you so much. You. Um, as, a, as a member of Pipeline Angels, one of our uh, big investments was in Mented. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if you're familiar with Mented, but they yeah. might have some crossovers between um, what it is that you're looking to um, create. So if there are some interactions okay. that I can make there, if there are folks there yeah. uh, at Mented that would be of interest to you to connect, I would love to connect you there. And then I would just love to introduce you to the Pipeline Angels platform. It might be a great way to um, garner some early investment. There's a lot of interest right now in um, in cosmetics and specifically for this demographic, which is just blowing up and it's awesome. Yeah. So I'm um, really excited to connect you with the larger team. Perfect, thank you so much. Yes, I would love to. I would love to connect after. Yeah. And to piggyback on what Warren was saying, how big is your team? Yeah, so I don't yet have a team, um, but what I foresee is working with um, a, a branding team, a branding and marketing team, um, okay. does, like helping me with design. Also accounting, um, I'm not so much of like a numbers person, right? So working with an accounting team and, um, or, you know, an accountant rather, and a legal team just to help me navigate all that uh, the legalities that go into having a business. Absolutely. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you everybody. Yeah. All right. Moving on down. Um, I I don't. I might. If I do, I apologize if I butcher the name. But um, Mar Zaid, twenty four hour uh, yoga. Uh no, actually it's uh Jeep Mag. So before I start, I just want to say that um. Uh, do you guys see my screen? No. No, we don't. Okay. Uh, so. We can do it for you. Oh, there you go. Okay. So, um, hi everybody. So before I start, I uh, just want to say that uh, Jibmak, it's an Algerian Arabic word and it means bring on your way. And it's a mobile platform um, that I'm willing to launch in Algeria uh, first and expand into other countries. Uh, so all what I'm going to uh, talk about in this presentation can does concern the market of Algeria and not the United States. Uh, so it's a mobile uh, platform that connects people who want to send or receive a a medium-sized package with someone uh, who is willing to go toward the destination. And it could be uh, someone who is driving his own car or a passenger who is commuting in a bus, train, plane, whatever. So uh, how uh, did we get the idea? So there is actually two ways to send a package. So 
via the postal services, the official ones, and more than 80% of the packages are late. And when I say late, it's more than a month sometimes. And five of the package, five percent of the packages are lost, completely lost. So people use unofficial ways like taxi drivers, delivery companies, but they're expensive up to 10 times the regular price and very inconvenient. So people go to the bus station, meet with the driver, and the recipient has to do the same thing. So it's time consuming. And uh, what are we bringing, what are we trying to resolve is to make it very convenient and affordable. We want to reduce the price by 50 to 60%. When I save time, when I make it safe, when I give the opportunity to people to uh, track their packages, and when I give to everyone who is traveling the opportunity to reduce the travel expenses and even make money. So here's the a very quick overview on how the app works. So uh, you sign up, sign in, you choose your destination, uh, you choose all the details concerning pickup, drop off, other details, and you get the price. Uh, after um, you exchange the package with a transporter, and this is the most vulnerable uh, step, and there is like many mandatory safety steps. And you track your package, and there is a drop off after, depending on uh, what we agreed on. So uh, the I've market. Got 35 actually, seconds. Okay, the market is ready. There is a new department, a governmental department, who is completely dedicated to startups. Uh, so who do we want to help? Everybody who wants to send a package, everybody who want to reduce his travel expenses. There is like between 15 and 19 million packages a year being sent and want to reach 1,000 packages a day by the first of uh, year. We want to expand our business to other countries like France, Spain, which is 70 million packages. And uh, we are seeking for 23K for 3% stake for software engineering and marketing. Thank Perfect. you. Perfect. Right on time. Thank you. Yeah. Awesome. Judges, what questions do we have? I'm sorry. I guess that, that, then I will start if that was not starting. I wanted to ask you, so, OK, you got the money. Um, where would you go first? Like, what is your first step? You got the money. So our first step, we want to just develop the app. We have all the concept. We just need to develop the app. Where, where, how would you do that? So uh, we have a team in Algeria like who is uh, just waiting for us like to pay them. We have all the concept. We've, it's been like a year that we're working on it. And we know the market well. So we're just, we just want to develop the app. It's the first step. So you're, you're saying you don't have an engineer tech person on your team yet. It's a tech company. No. Okay. Yeah, that my, yeah. so my suggestion would be like you, if it's a tech company that you have, you have enough passion for your, your, what you're building that somebody will just join your team. So instead of paying somebody to create an app, like you have somebody who can be part of your team. That, w that would be a good idea too. Yeah. Awesome. We have about 30 seconds for another question. Hi, Nabil. So, yeah, I'm sorry. I actually asked the question, but I was on self-mute, so I didn't notice. Anyways, um, uh, just really quickly, the competitive field, just give us a quick one-liner as far as, uh, well, there's UPS, there's FedEx, there's so, reactive regions. So what's what makes you unique? So actually, in, in, in Algeria, it's a completely different market. Like UPS and DHL and all these companies are very expensive. It's It's like compared to the pay of people so what we're gonna do yeah, just is, really quickly so we, we save time so what what how would you uh how do you propose to reduce the cost so by using the people moves someone who is already traveling he gotta take uh, a package on his way it's as simple as that like there is okay. no like trucks or big trucks or something like people moves it's kind of airbnb for package for package delivery i see yeah okay. it's like carpool for packages Got it. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. So it looks like uh, next up we have uh, Ever with Liberty for the Brave, LFTB. Hello. Hello. Uh, uh, control from here. Can you hear me? 
Yes, yeah. we can hear you. Uh, do you mind if I control the slides? Okay, thank you. If you have them to share, yeah, perfect. Okay, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for your time. Uh, this is our brand, Liberty for the Brave. Um, it's catered towards veterans and helping them, you know, start their first steps in their personal and financial journeys. Uh, my name is Ewald Pattendall. Uh, this is my partner, Robert Rodriguez. Uh, we're both uh, electricians mates from the US, the United States Navy, both x-ray technicians, and both run our own Amazon business. So well, our content revolves around um, exposing these benefits that the military offers. And we understand that there's um, people out there and services that explain these benefits, but there are a lot of underutilized benefits that aren't being used and aren't known, and they're not being put into a context for veterans um, in order to use it in their day-to-day -day life. So, so uh, you know, we are in this demographic of veterans that experience a disconnect in society. And a large part of the military community and why it's so strong is because we share the same struggles. Um, it doesn't matter what branch you're a part of or what um, where you were stationed, when you share these experiences, you immediately fear, uh, feel a connection. And as much as the military is difficult and grueling, and as much as any veteran wants to leave the military, the reality is, is that they are leaving a, uh, a tight-knit community. So that's what we wanted to emulate, is put it onto a platform that you know, acts as an extension to their positive experiences um, of the military. Um, also, you know, realize their potential, utilize their skills from the military, and then create something for themselves. Oh, oops. Um, so how do we do this? Uh, so we want to create a relationship, you know, that connection. Um, transparency is key. We want to tell them exactly what I'm presenting today. Um, also, you know, we've analyzed the market. And a lot of the content is not entertaining. So if it's not entertaining, it's not engaging and they're not retaining the information. You know, we want hopefully to reflect our product and, and the content that we provide, the video quality production um, and the consistency of releasing a video every week. We're at 30 uh, seconds. Thank you. So the price is uh, $20 per month. Uh, there's a referral um, membership where you get $5 off for every person up to two people, uh, limited to a thousand members. Um, but the biggest thing we want to emph emphasize is the partner accountability program, where it's, if you and a partner uh, sign up, you both get $15 uh, for the membership. And um, it creates uh, three things. One is that it- Oh, uh, I'm so sorry, but we're at time. Oh, sorry, okay. All righty. I don't know if you have a last slide you want to throw up just for the judges, but thank you. And judges, any follow-up questions? Yeah. Um, who are your competitors and what differentiates you from them? Yeah, sorry. Um, let me uh, close this. Can't see it. Uh, so, I mean, there our competitors are people that are in the YouTube space, but they, you know, the content when they're presenting it, it's just like in, in front of a camera and, you know, the the VA provides this information, but the difference is that, you know, we're part of that demographic of veterans and we've done these things, we've done these things such as starting an online retail business or doing online marketing. And we're trying to put it into a context so that, you know, the important thing is that they do something. It's not about like making money or starting investments. It's just telling them that, you know, we're no different from you. We want to show you that you can do it yourself. Ewald, I thought that was so great. I think that the, t the problem that you're tackling is awesome. Um, I'm wondering if you've considered reaching out to uh, VCs that are already funding um, uh, veteran entrepreneurs, or if you've connected um, with any of those groups. We have not yet. We, we wanted to do it ourselves from the beginning, just so that, you know, we, we're, um, we're showing our audience that, you know, we're putting our message to practice. 
you know. I would really recommend, I put a couple of links in the chat and sent them to you. I'd really recommend reaching out to groups that are already helping entrepreneurs who are in that same demographic because they're going to know exactly what the problems actually are that entrepreneurs from your demographic are facing because they're trying to, to figure out how to help them already. And you might be able to be such a great addition to what they're doing because you could provide the content while they already have the audience. So you could have a built thin group of, of entrepreneurs that are working on the thing that you're trying to solve and you would be providing a great service for uh, the VCs that are working with those um, with those emerging entrepreneurs. It's just such a great demographic and a great opportunity. You don't have to reinvent the wheel and they don't have to produce content and you could really support one another in a mutually beneficial way. Awesome. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Next up, we have Anita Policante with Mop It Up. Hi, guys. Okay. okay. You guys can see it? Yeah. Can you guys hear me? Okay, perfect. Yep. Um, <laughs> good afternoon, everyone. My name is Anita Policante, and let me introduce you to a new concept of Italian di dining called Mop It Up. So, Mop It Up is uh, an Italian restaurant focused on bringing up the ritual of scarpetta by serving traditional homemade sauces to mop up with fresh baked bread. Um, this is my uh, mission statement, my why. Um, so I want customers to experience the most intimate side of Italy through the taste of its local flavors. Now, uh, San Francisco is known for having a strong passion for the Italian culture mostly North Beach, as you may know. Um, however, through generation generation, the real essence of the Italian cuisine um, was, it's kind of changing and it's adapting to the different tastes of the American culture. And by, because of that, uh, the flavors are, mo are modified right now and more often we're losing the quality of the product. So it's common to find rearranged menus with, they don't respect the Italian traditional recipe. For example, linguine alfredo, spaghetti meat with meatballs. That's not Italian, that's not Italian. Um, and also the staff lacks of um, cultural background. Sometimes you can find um, people who work in the kitchen that are not Italian. Um, we mop it up. We want customers to rediscover the Italian culture by bringing a new way of enjoying traditional food um, with high quality ingredients and service. But how? So let me explain you what scarpetta means. Um, this word is close to the heart of every Italian who has enjoyed a delicious plate of pasta and wants to um, enjoy the last bit of, of sauce that is left on the plate. So scarpetta means little shoe and it's like a, a piece of bread that, it, that we use to mop up what is left. And it's a ritual that means that you really enjoy the meal, really enjoy the food. So here's the, our menu. So our products are importantly directly from Italy, um, wine producer and farmers. And we have a high skilled chef who follows the traditional recipe. And we want to uh, change the recipe every six months to have some variety for our customers. Our target market is composed by millennials, 45%. Who will find interest in the uniquest way to eat with the scarpetta gesture. This segment is always following with the trends and posts online about it. Then we have the Generation X. Um, this segment is have traveled to Italy at least Anita? once. Per, yes, um, at least once in their life, and they want to taste the same flavor they experience on vacation. And then we have the baby boomers. They're like the nostalgic ones, and maybe their great grandfather used to cook for them. So I've also worked on a website and a social media campaign to better engage our customer. Who yeah, I'm right sure. Time, Anita. I, I apologize, but we're at time. No, no, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> Thank you Mop so much. Mop it up. Much. Like, not I used to make it. <laughs> <laughs> Judges, what questions do we have for Anita? And mop it up. Yeah, hi, Anita. Uh, well, hi. it's great to have someone who appreciates and you know really can talk about the Italian um, cuisine authenticity. Uh, I, uh, I think it's a, it's a great, um, it's a great idea. And it's certainly, certainly there's market for that, but I, I'm, I'm just a little unclear. So this is, so you do have an actual restaurant or you're planning to set one up or is it just going to be kind of like a recipe, 
uh, advisory type of thing. Can you please tell us a little bit about the actual product? Don't worry. Uh, for now, it's an idea. I don't have a restaurant yet, but I'm looking for have like my own space and started okay. here in San Francisco because there's Italian culture. And also like if it goes well, of course, go to New York and Boston where there's a lot of Italian culture. So I think I can get, engage um, costume in those cities. Okay. All right. Great. Mm -hmm. So that's just something that you are you're hoping um, to eventually yeah. establish. Yeah. Yes, I'm looking for mentorship and, you know, yeah, business yeah. advice. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, uh, my question then would be, uh, have you have you considered catering? Uh, sure. to just to Just to see if there is a market for it. And then oh, if yes. you actually uh, know the owners of those restaurants and in um, North Beach and you actually talk to them and why they changed the recipes and I'm sure they are connected. I know uh, some of them that actually talk to, they, they, they have pretty good connections with Italy. So I wonder why they changed their recipes. So have you done that research? Yes, um, I'm, since I'm Italian, I like also to, to see my competitors and I've been to their restaurants. Um, I'm saying, okay, so some of them are real authentic and I really like the way they work, but some of them, they're like, they just use the names and like, and maybe they change it. And I talked to them, uh, talked to the owner of Mona Lisa. And he told me that when he came here 30 years ago, it was just a different time. And then Americans, just, they didn't like the menus. So he just changed it. And then just for money, I guess. And then he said he didn't want to change it back to the Italian recipe. So I think it's just a matter of like how much money, how, how much authenticity you want to put in your brand. And, and how much like business you want to put in, you know? So. Excellent, 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 excellent. Thank you so much, everybody. And um, you know what, I just had a, well, I don't want to claim that I had a realization. I was prompted by Diana, who's monitoring um, the deck that earlier I, I, I combined someone's name and someone's business incorrectly. So we actually have 24 hour yoga with MOOCs um, that I tapped. I apologize that I did not align the, the two columns very well. Do we want to go back to that, to 24 hour yoga? I, I'm moved here. I, and I, and I, I sincerely yeah. apologize. Yeah, I was thinking maybe after some time, but I'm okay. Do it. And then Diana, do we have that deck? We do, but uh, uh, I think he wanted to share his screen. Perfect, no. perfect. I, Diana, I, we, will, we will do it, yeah. You'll do it, yeah? I don't know. That. Okay, ah. give me one sec. Ready? I, I already want to do yoga right there in your background. Yes, I think. Uh, I think maybe we should uh, just do one yoga pose, like namaste, and and rub your ears, and you know get to one stretch. Okay, twenty-four hour yoga. Let's start now. The twenty-four hour yoga is less stretch. That is the uh, slogan we have. It. Next slide. Twenty-four hour yoga is the first marketing place for connecting yogis and people who like to share and learn live yoga across the globe. Next slide, please. The problems are because of coronavirus, rise, rise in anxiety and depression, uh, limited opportunities for yoga teachers from India and Nepal. Online yoga classes are a little pricey, time constraints, people are working too much. That are the problems right now. Next slide, please. The solution is the blessing of internet. Uh, the, we can connect the world from our fingertips. Next slide, please. 24 hour yoga. Live stream yoga 24-7, uh, make yoga accessible to everyone, connect experienced teachers from developing countries to help them earn livelihood, sustain by sharing our blessings. Next slide, please. Our target market is busy professional like us, parents that need flexibility and a little time away from everyone, yogis with limited mobility, yogis um, affected by COVID-19, yogis looking for teachers from other part of the world. And our other customers, the teachers, teachers who, uh, yoga experts around the world, teachers who like to share 
their gift. Next slide, please. Our market is, according to uh, Yoga Journal, 14 million yoga practitioners in US in 2017 itself. And, and today they are expecting it is going to be 55 million. And a yogi spends his lifetime saving $62,000 on classes, workshops, and accessories. And that is what, uh, you know, Cloud Health says. And also they spend $40 for a class. Thank you. Next, next slide, please. The revenue stream, we have it. First, the classes actually, we planned it like donation-based classes because that is a yogic tradition. We never used to charge anybody money. And, but membership fees for members who wanted to access library, alert cut the sales for courses, workshops, and private session, consulting from corporate um, and corporates and schools, sales from yoga-related products. We're at 30 seconds. We are looking for a funding and uh, an early scale and early funding for a startup, looking for advice on our, our advices on our business and marketing development. Next slide, please. Our team is my me and my friend, Lakshmi Pandi, and me. We together we have 70 years of experience and we have a chief content editor, Maria. Next slide, please. Let's Thank you so much, and let's see you in the screen one day, and let us stretch together to make a difference in the world. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Judges, follow-up questions. Right. I absolutely love this, and more time will you cannot be, my friend. Um, so, but I was curious, how, um, let's see, how much are you going to be charging for each donation? You know, you are not having any kind of uh, uh, price on this one. People can donate anything you want. But the people want. from every part of the world will be donating. That's okay. why we don't want, want to put a price on it. But, you know, if a yogi paying $40 an hour here, they will be at least paying $5 a session, I, I think. See. Yeah. And, and I know you said you're targeting yogis, but within that uh, cohort, who exactly will you be targeting in terms of the demographics? The, the yogis means the people who is practicing yoga. That is yogis. I, I understand, but the demographics. Yes. The, just, the, if it was younger people or... You know, the whole kind of people, because the yoga classes are going to be, you know, the open classes are going to be a very light version of stretching and easy way of getting rid of pain, things like that. It's much easier. But they can, they can join the other classes or workshops and all, then they can, they have to pay differently. But in normal stretching, because you know that we are always sitting in front of computers, you all have a neck pain and all, You there is no way to get up. And now when you have an app or something, you can actually click into and get into a class and stretch yourself. 24 hours, it's it. Uh, Mukta, I would love to connect with you um, afterward. You. I've, I've worked with um, a couple of clients who have online yoga platforms. Um, it's a really crowded space, but you have an interesting value proposition that maybe you haven't fully articulated yet. And I think that there's something that's really exciting there that we can pull out. And that is that um, both you and, and your co-founder um, are experienced in, um, in traditional yogic practices and are actually from the community. Um, and I think that there's a lot there, um, especially as we're seeing like the whitewashing of yoga across the US, that you have yeah, something yeah. that's really um, uh, authentic. Can bring people we already together have around that. Please. Perfect. And we're very close on time. So if there's a last comment. Yeah, let me make a last comment. Uh, it's next to what Lauren just said. My buddy runs Yoga.org. And so obviously they have a significant pull in the market because of their domain and because he's involved and he built powerful companies. So look at yoga.org. And if you feel like there's a good for collaborating with that uh, website, that organization. You know my contact info, get a hold of me. I'd be happy to connect you with the leadership of that. Okay, thank you so much. Excellent, thank you team, to everybody. And now to go back to the regular flow of the program, next up we have Helena and it looks like possibly Christopher, Helena and Christopher with While You Can. Hello. Um can you all hear me? I'm Chris. Uh, I can hear I'm you. And Chris will start the presentation. Okay. 
So I'll just get started then. So while you can, making peace with painful people. Next slide. Everyone knows someone with a, uh, an estranged relationship that's maybe lasted for years. This causes pain for themselves and their communities. It's hard to change on your own. And many people need help to overcome fear, get perspective and find skilled advisors. Next. To meet these needs, we offer four coordinated online products that the client can choose from by themselves. An education and reflection set of tools, support groups, one-on-one -on -one therapy, and facilitated three-way conversations with the person they're having trouble with. Next. We believe there's a large market for this kind of service, including uh, many different sec uh, sectors from recovery programs, traumatized communities, and others. To focus on the 55 and over crowd first, we believe we can find a 2.4 million person um, target market at this time, and will probably grow in the future. Next. Why now? These trends make us a good time for while you can. Mental health needs are rising as anxiety rises and even empathy is on the decline. People are more comfortable seeking help with these kinds of things as therapy has become kind of commonplace. And online therapy is established and video calls are now common, especially after COVID-19. I think Elena will take it over. Okay, so in terms of revenue and costs, uh, we have four main um, streams of revenue, as uh, Chris uh, mentioned before. In, in the first year, we would need a grant to start the company. Next. Uh, in terms of competition, the therapists are our main competitors but they offer only one perspective, set price and open duration. So the sessions can last forever. Uh, while uh, you can offer uh, four different kinds of uh, diversity of uh, uh, products, we are focused on a single issue and uh, we have di different uh, set of price and we are in availability. We are online and we have therapists all over the country. So we are more focused flexible and more affordable also. Next, next. Uh, today our team is, uh, we are in this, uh, the project um, point and we, uh, the team is uh, Christopher and I, and we have a pool of advisors composed by um, uh, 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 in, the, in the field of, of entrepreneurship and psych, uh, psychologists. Next. 20 seconds, Helena. Yeah. Okay. And our vision is we want to change the mood of America by helping as many people as possible. And for that, we need mentorship to raise 300 grants to, uh, so we can um, invest a lot of uh, in research and development and start the company. Thank you very much. Perfect timing. Thank you, Helena. And over to the judges with questions. Uh, hi, Helena. Uh, thank you very much and a very informative and uh, certainly an interesting, um, interesting idea. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about your go-to-market strategy? Uh, Chris, would you like to go over that? Well, our go-to-market strategy is first we need to uh, solidify our team. As you noticed, we're a little thin at the moment, but we have these people who have been very interested in psychology and in entrepreneurship. So um, there's a lot of interest in that. Uh, so our, our first step would be to find the, a better team and develop the four product categories further. Um, that would be our first step. Okay. Sounds okay. A uh, quick yeah. question since uh, Goodler, I just mentioned, I don't know if you heard before that we just, uh, we are working with women in recovery. Mm -hmm. So the subject that you were talking about is very interested. I, I wanted to ask if you have a platform ready. Did you say you have four offerings already? No, we have. No, we don't. Oh, oh, sorry. Go ahead, go, go ahead Chris. Uh, we, we, we don't have the, we have got schematic designs for the products. We don't have a platform online yet. Um, that's, that's our next step. Um, I would suggest that you don't go for, you don't even advertise for products. You just start with one just to see how it, how you do it. Because I wanted to ask you which one of, uh, which one of uh, four that is actually working and, and uh, what you can offer to us for mm -hmm. our women. Mm -hmm. But so my suggestion would be just to start somewhere. You are not going to be able to get a grant if you just have an idea. Nobody gives the grants for ideas. Um, but at least to start with one. Okay, yeah. And we can reconnect. I would like to connect and see what we can do to work together. 
Okay, great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Fabulous. Thank you, uh, everybody. All right. As we're whittling away towards the end of the pitches, we have Amy Tam. Hi, Amy. Uh, with Self Reflection Travels. And if you're not presenting, go ahead and feel free to mute yourself. Amy, you have to unmute yourself. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Can you hear <laughs> me? Yes. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, thank you, Jonathan. So let me see. I think the slide is not correct where it starts. Um, I think this is that. Okay, we can proceed. Yeah. Okay, I think. Uh, can we go back? Sorry. I just want to say thank you to everybody, participants, uh, Vivian, all of us are in different places trying to coordinate one thing. Um, and there are some uh, misalignments sometimes. So thank you for everybody's patience with the technology that is going on during COVID. <laughs> Amy, go. Yeah, you can go. Uh, I, okay, I think the, the first slide was just uh, off, but that's fine, I can navigate. Hello everybody, good afternoon. My name's Amy. Um, I am going to talk about healthy living, um, lifestyle travels and self-love. So, uh, you know, we all know that, you know, we all have issues with um, personal coaching and, um, you know, we all seek to have that personal coaching, um, whether it's at home or on the go. So that's what we're focused on. Next slide. So the problem is that, you know, we don't have enough time um, and we currently, you know, struggle with um, inadequate time, um, whether it's, you know, focused on work too much, whether it's um, not enough time on our balanced nutrition. Um, and we also struggle with uh, self image and overall um, our health. Next slide. So solution one um, will be a more balanced diet, uh, whether it's a daily, weekly, uh, and yearly focus. Um, next slide. Solution two is going to be sustaining uh, the, the growth uh, and development of, sorry, a feeling at home uh, without having to travel. Uh, so meaning that, you know, you really start noticing your surroundings more um, and being able to cope, um, you know, as you know, we are all sheltered in place, for example. Uh, next slide, please. Solution three is going to be really regaining that self-image and that self-confidence in yourself, um, being able to uh, endure that self-love. Next slide, please. Uh, target market is going to be the millennials. Um, currently, we have a uh, the U just U.S. alone. We have about uh, seven point five uh, billion net worth in the market. And as far as um, the entire coaching industry, we have fifteen billion. So we're definitely um, looking, you know, to tap a really big market. Uh, next slide, please. So some of the, uh, you know, gains for the institution side is going to be um, less uh, overcrowded, uh, you know, rehabilitation centers. Um, we'll be looking more, um, you know, established and flawless uh, for the clients. Amy, they're going about 25 seconds. For, um, a one on one personal approach. And next slide. And, I'm not and sure SRT will fund. 10 seconds, Amy, 10 seconds. SRT will fund by with partnership uh, with institutions, virtual um, memberships, and as well as weekly uh, sessions. And lastly, you, um, making sure that, you know, we uh, establish and recreate that app, a new lifestyle um, for those who need the support. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Amy. 
Thank you. Sorry, I, I, I cut over you a couple times. I wasn't sure that you heard me. I apologize if I uh, if I tripped you up. No. Thank you so much for your presentation. Judges, what questions do we have for Amy? Amy, can you talk a little bit about your um, competitors? Who else is in the market that you're looking at and how are you differentiating yourself from those businesses? Uh, so personal coaching, we have a lot of other um, individuals uh, who are doing personal coachings as far as to, for example, uh, Kristen, uh, I think Brian does a personal coaching herself um, in the entrepreneurship um, center uh, in San Francisco. I've actually participated in a few of those, as well as um, there's an individual, uh, I believe, is it Christy, um, who does also coaching based on self-image. Um, and then there's various of agencies out there, rehabilitations, uh, that refer them into uh, individual coachings, therapies, therapeutic sessions. Um, so it is more of an indiv individual one-on-one uh, -on -one type of um, agency. Do you have experience with uh, personal coaching? Um, I personally have been coaching my, well, my friend's been coming to me as well as um, on the professionalism side. Um, I actually been, you know, uh, I, why I would hope that I'm a really good coach for my teams. Um, you know, I'm a regional director and I've been coaching a very vast um, territory uh, of teams for many years, um, you know, and various of roles I've held. Um, so uh, with that said, that's a little bit more um, the business side. However, level, um, you know, I have been a foster child and I definitely um, the, the you know the the support um, and the you know mental health is definitely needed in uh, the early childhood and also um, into juveniles and also into early uh, even young adults. So I definitely know the struggle and uh, the lack of um, uh, services sometimes we have, uh, especially in the United States. Um, so I definitely think it's a growing market and a lot of people, uh, need that, uh, focus on into mental health. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Amy. And for the questions and as we're, uh, getting very close, uh, do we have Kay here? Don't have your business name, but Kay, it looks like you're in the audience. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen now. Fabulous. Hello, so my name is Kay Ujia, and this is Jack. I'm Jack, yeah. Um, and then our mission statement is um, connecting independent beauty people with price, conscious buyers and seeking better values in inconvenience in salon. Um, so the name of our, give me one second, of our, of our vision is called the Beauty Index Bar. Um, and then the problem that we would want to solve is um, expensive booth route for beauty providers. Some beauty services are too expensive and then and it can be difficult for upcoming beauty service providers to find new clientele. There are a lot of beauty professionals offering their service at a fraction of beauty salon costs, but no, no efficient medium exists to connect people to providers. Um, so for instance, um, if you guys see, there's a lot of like Instagram influencers who um, sometimes promote what they do. So if they're cutting hair and then they get a lot of um, followers. So instead of having it, having um, people follow you through Instagram, we would go ahead and have an app that would be easier for you to con um, connect with your clientele. Um, so some of the solutions would be service provide, um, can provide their services from home and clients, um, home or a space. Um, because I think like, for instance, here in San Francisco, um, renting a space is very expensive. Um, if you're a hairstylist, if you're a nail tech. Um, so the difference with our app and our um, vision or the app that we want to build would be um, being able to provide those services from the comfort of your home or the client's home. Um, providers are saving a cost of space. Um, so hopefully they will be able to um, go ahead and give promotions and discounts and drop the price of um, the, you know, if you're getting your hair done or the, or the cut. The location, um, we would have a location search where it would be from the location that you're are, you are at. So if you go to Instagram, you usually see someone who has, um, I don't know, who does hair and they live in Texas, but you're here in San Francisco, or you're here in the Bay. So you don't have, you can't really go over to Texas to get your hair cut. So we would have the location here. 
And then um, there are Apple requiring no tech savvy requirements. Um, you would get receive Insta payment tips and you would stay connected with the customer provider and then we guarantee on booking. No last minute cancellation for providers or customers. And as far as uh, how the app actually intends on making money goes, we would have transaction fees on every single booking. Um, we would, and it, it would vary between five to 8%, depending on how popular the app was. And we would also have featured listings where your, um, services would appear before everyone else's. And we would also have a premium seller subscription. And the, uh, I guess the larger our user base is the, the more value we provide our service seconds, folks, 15 seconds. The more value we provide our, yeah, okay. And then uh, our target market is adults, college students, and anyone who's seeking beauty on a budget. And that's our project. Awesome. Thank you to both of you. Judges, I'll give it over to you for questions. Uh, yeah, thank you, Kay. And um, uh, I think it's, uh, I mean, it's a big market, obviously, for, for beauty industry. And um, there's definitely going to be a niche. And I think uh, figuring out your, your specific niche. Uh, this is a marketplace um, that you are recommending. This is a um, particularly, maybe particularly important within certain communities, right? So you, you want to kind of really, you mentioned your target demographic, but your target demographic is just way too, too vast, right? It's basically anyone who needs a beauty service. Understandably, but I think your unique value proposition is kind of a segment and the market and finding that particular demographic that you want to focus on and providing particular type of um, uh, beauty services and, and having the marketplace basically organized around it. Essentially, you are gig salad, right? You know, gig salad, it's a platform for, um, uh, for performers. So you're gig salad for beauty practitioners um, and professionals. So you, you want to, and it's a huge market and there's a lot of going on. There are a lot of marketplaces for that. So you want to really segment your market more uh, definitively, I, I suggest. But um, my question is, um, have you thought about it? Um, well, we definitely would focus on more price conscious areas when it came to targeting like our ads. Um, because we, we definitely feel like most of the services that we would offer are for services that are like, they offer very high price differentials compared to like salons that are providing the service and individual individuals who are offering the service, like the service. So like, for example, uh, like blow us, do you want to give an example of how much like, um, give me one second. I'm sorry. But it, it was like, there's around a $150 difference between the price that an individual is willing to give you a blah and a uh, salon. So, I mean, there's a bunch of different services. The price point. The price point may be a differential and important difference. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Uh, how far, Alona, you're in the developing the program, uh, the pro platform? And if we can keep the answer concise, then we're over time. We're just building the concept. That's all. Perfect. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Um, next, uh, I just did a quick, and I didn't see in the audience, but is Joseph Whitaker with Money Saver here? It's Josie. Oh, I am so sorry. I think I read something. Well, Josie, that's, there we go. <laughs> I apologize. And take it away. Okay, so my service is um, a, an app. It's like a game app for money. So it's called um, Power Bank Mine. So if you go to the next slide. And the issues is people have a hard time saving. So um, the game helps you um, learn how to save in a way where it's linked to your bank and also linked to the retailers. If you go to the next um, slide. So it's a free service app that values um, savings principles and it's um, used in a virtual game. Can you go to the next slide? So the game is um, basically, um, it's like structured in a way where um, you get to save in like short term and long term and in checkings but the way you save is like in a game where you have different goals, like shoes, that's like $60. And then there's like um, 
like a purse that's like a hundred. So what the game does is that every time your check deposits, you have a choice to um, move the money. So that's basically the game is like banking, like your own savings. You move the money to um, the short term uh, goals. And with um, retailers being connected, um, you could search up. It will let you know when the retailers has a sale with that specific item because it's linked to the app where the app will find data to um, what you're saving up for. <laughs> and I can go to the next slide. So the revenue will be ads, um, subscription to more premier, premier, premium retailers. And then how many times the streaming is for the game and then how the banks can make transactions through the app will be charged and then referral commissions from retailers to the next slide. The demographics is middle-class Americans or anyone that needs, needs savings, needs help with savings. And then can you go to the next slide? So um, the expenses is tech team, data analysis, branding. Can you go to the next slide? You have about 20 seconds. So room for opportunity is for customers to save and shop with like in a fun game way. And then for investors, for banks and retailers to be connected to the bank, to connected to the app. Next slide. And then future growth could be like um, expand from retail retailers to services to help with credit card payoffs and loans and actually be becoming a bank. And then that's it. Awesome. Thank you so much. Perfect timing. Uh, give it over to the judges to ask some follow-up questions. Yeah, so I really like the idea of gaming, uh, gamifying savings. And I like that the end goal that you elucidated, that the end goal was uh, becoming a bank. So good job on both of those. But I was curious, how is your product different from, say, um, Honey or Rakuten, which was Ebates? Um, I will say it's, um, it's more with the principle of how the game works, where it's more based off of how it's structured. Like, for example, if the game knows that you're saving up for a certain kind of shoes, and then if you search it up in Google, you know how much that shoes cost. So collide, like, um, networking, networking with a uh, retailers and finding out data of what's on sale and that certain kind of shoe will pop up and that could be a part of the game where oh okay I could use that to um buy the sale and save from there or I decide to switch up the short-term goals to to another short-term goal if that makes sense gotcha Josie, can you talk a little bit about um, other apps that you looked at in um, your product discovery process and kind of which ones were the most inspiring to you? Um, I'll say uh, Simple Bank. Um, pretty similar. It's just a bank. It's not connected to retailers where you could get a data from what is on sale. What's your save? What's on your savings agenda? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Wonderful. Wonderful. Thank you. Now let's see. I have one last person, but it looks like they may be here. Do we have Nicholas Winstead? No, unfortunately, he's not presenting. Well, oh my goodness. Well, in that case. Uh -huh. Whether it is a snaps or claps, can we just give a round of applause to all of our pitchers? <laughs> and also, can we just thank everybody? Can we thank Ian, can we thank all of our judges? Lauren, Clap, Galena. Um, who am I missing? I am uh, there we go, Stacy. Um, thank you so much for all of your participation. And I think at this point, we are going to uh, go off into a, a breakout room. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, for the judges. Vivian, do you have control of that? 
No, it's still with uh, uh, Ian, but you can make me the, the host now again, Ian, so I can put the judges together. And for the rest, uh, please stand by because we will launch the poll. So you guys have, will have the chance to vote for your favorite team. Yes, and, and I will be launching that in just a bit and giving people uh, the opportunity to respond to that. So I just want to clarify, when you see this, you're going to see three of uh, the, each of the questions is limited to 10 answers. So obviously there are more than 10 pictures. So what we're looking for is for you to select three in total. There's three separate ones in there. So only select a total of three, not three from each. And if anyone has any questions around that, please feel free to ask. I'm going to relaunch that right now. And we should all have that. And um, it, do you remember the teams? <laughs> no. OK. Let no, me... nobody remember the team, though. That's OK. I can, I'm going to share my screen, and it will have those on it. OK, good. Give me just one moment. Yeah, so you'll be reminded it was team one, team two. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let me pull it back up. I closed it. Give me a second. <laughs> All right. Almost. Hello, technology. We're all doing our best. <laughs> <laughs> and here we go. And let's see. You know, but I'm, I wonder if the phasing is right, Vivian, because I see this one doesn't have a number. Oh, OK. I can announce the name. Oh, you know was Todd in? I think Todd was out, actually, right? Todd, Todd is out. He did okay, that. Then. Yeah. Uh -huh. Then so, the names are correct. Then the numbers are correct, folks. Yeah. We can remove Nicolas. It's not also with us. Yeah. Correct. Same. Yeah, he doesn't have a number anyway, so that's good. Yeah. How we can vote? Uh, there should be a, the the poll is launched. Do people have the poll? On my screen, it only showed up to ten options to select i don't know if it's just my if it's you know something to do with mine but i didn't see um because it looks like we have like seven uh -huh. 20 total and it only showed me up to 10 teams huh. I have, I have you, a also when you scroll down yeah because i What's have that? people voting for the others that's mm. okay jonathan yes but the numbers doesn't uh, correspond with the uh, number when we were presenting, no? Um, just go up to 20. Yeah, just go up to 20. I don't, these, uh, these were ones that were maybe going to be on there, but they're not. So feel free to just pick three from the first two questions and don't touch question three, it looks like. Mm. Can you please can... scroll down a little bit so we can see all of the teams? Yes, I can certainly do that. Thank you for asking. Whoops. Certain, uh, Jonathan, I can't see where to vote. My screen is full of this. Numbers. There we go. Um, everybody should have the poll. So you might have to, sometimes I know that when I am facilitating workshops, I have to uh, click out of different screens and that poll will be somewhere living in one of your windows. Uh. So do the best. If everyone can't access it, I think we'll have a good swath of data regardless, but I apologize. Uh, I can't see it. Yeah. I can't say. Um, Jonathan, it's not possible for me to submit it. Okay, no. you know what? Folks, let's, let's do something different right now. Yeah, okay. Can you, can people go into the chat window and okay. type the numbers you want, like one comma five comma seven. Okay, thank you. That's Let's okay. do it that way, and I'll I'll tabulate it um, somehow that way. <laughs> I'm just gonna end the poll. So even if you did vote on the poll, go ahead and do it by this method, friends. Jonathan, you. This is Stephanie. You can submit if you if you uh, use the question number three. Just hit somebody for question number three. That's the, uh, well, I, that's I think, the reason. 
a lot of people aren't even getting the poll for some reason, so that's the issue. Okay, because once I hit one of the contestants for uh, question number three, then the submit button lit up. Oh, interesting. So it's forcing you to vote one from each. Exactly. <laughs> Perfect. I'm getting people's votes very well via the chat window. So if people just want to give the feedback that way, I will tabulate. And I was planning on being a little more engaging and chatting and talking about how exciting things were, but I have an, un uh, an unrealized task right now. So if anybody wants to share or talk about what was exciting, um, feel free to engage among yourselves. Also, if you want to just vote and wait in silence, that's fine too. Uh, excuse me, is uh, Ian still in this main room? I'm not sure. I, okay. I don't um, all right, uh, Gleb has to be in the breakout room. I added him. Okay. And uh, Gleb, did you get the invitation? To... I'm sorry, guys. This is really hard to do <laughs> rather than a face to face or a face, you know, we're in a physical space. So, so Gleb has to be there now. Gleb, Gleb's there now. So you have Lauren, Stacey. And all four judges okay. are. Okay, thank you. Yep. Hey, everybody. While you all are writing down your results and Jonathan's figuring it out, I posted about our event. I posted a live stream and a short little post tagging San Francisco and the Center for Entrepreneurship and Innovation. So I posted that on all the main social media. I'm wondering if it might be helpful. Maybe I could just put that in the chat window for all of you, the links to those. And at a minimum, if you're active on one of the social media sites, share that because it allows you to share your presentation with your peers' presentations. And, or you could just take the example, do what I wrote on Facebook, write something that's uniquely you, and then put the link in for the live stream. Uh, so I think I'll pop that in the chat uh, right now and give all of you a chance to save some time if you wanted to share your experience today. So give me just a moment and I'll pop these links. So the, the poll did not work? Nope, it wasn't quite aligning and not everyone could access it. So everybody just um, put their selections in the chat and I am tabulating those right now. Oh my gosh, I'm sorry. No worries, this solution worked perfectly. <laughs> yeah, it, was, it has worked in my previous class. It, I tested it, I'm sorry. It's okay. Two. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, we can also use, or we could have used Paul everywhere, but early, earlier we just tested this and it worked, you know, the Paul that was just embedded on Zoom. So I'm, I'm really sorry about this. Okay. 2.13.6. Oh, I don't think we have to be sorry, Vivian. We're doing a great job. It's unexpected to run this event on Zoom, so. You could tell I'm a nervous wreck. <laughs> I've been, I've been a part of a couple dozen organizations approaching events um, on Zoom unexpectedly. And Jonathan has made this a very wonderful experience for emotion, and the tech has worked just fine. Yay for all of us. Woo! Yeah, that's true. Thank yeah. you so much, everyone. But anyway, <laughs> thank you, guys. It's beautiful. Vivian, are there any of these that are not part of the evaluation? Like, were there any outside ones? No, everybody uh, can be uh, voted. Perfect. For a uh, crowd's favorite, yeah. Mm-hmm. Perfect. Mm-hmm. All right. Okay, so. Let me, ju- I've tabulated, let me count. Okay. Thank you so much. And um, let's check our breakout room. If they're done. Hmm. All right. Okay, everybody. So if you look, I just put something in the chat window. It's kind of a long post. I shared four social links I posted on LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. So those are things that you could potentially share or just emulate something similar and share the live stream link. And then I also put the live stream link in there again for all of you. Again, when a student shares this event, you're not just sharing what you present, but you're sharing what the other 20 peers in your class shared. So it's a really fun way to be able to help one another, you know, expose uh, what each other are working on. All right. Well, when, um, whenever we come back together, I have got my results tabulated. Thank you, Jonathan, our data analytics guy for now. Well, this Paul failed us. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, data, data analytics. This is high tech stuff over here, folks. <laughs> you know what, we're in the, in the age of COVID, it's the age of make it work, as Tim Gunn on Project Runway would say, which my partner and I are going through seasons like crazy. And we always talk about this, you know, entrepreneurs, we had to really be ready for the unexpected, agility, flexibility, you know, that is super important, resiliency. So this is really 
big, great time for us to apply all those. <laughs> so this is the year figure it out. Yes, yeah, seriously. Figure it out. Seriously. So the judges are just completing, I guess, as, as we're just waiting for the rooms, the two rooms to reintegrate. Does anybody have anything like anything that was exciting today? Anything that really stood out? I mean, I can talk I... about it. <laughs> a, lot, a lot of please, aside from <laughs> the, the, the deck mishap, what stood out? <laughs> Yeah, right. Um, no, I thought it was just really inspiring and cool seeing everybody presenting their ideas. Um, throughout the semester, we have had, you know, just in lecture and discussion, like there is snippets. Um, you kind of get snippets of like what people's business ideas are, right? But it was cool seeing like everything come to fruition, seeing everybody share it. Um, yeah, and I'm really proud of all of us. I think everyone did really well. Yeah. So, yeah. I, you know, the, the thing to me, and, and I, you know, I've said this a couple of times is like, I never thought of myself as an entrepreneur until I was around all of you entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. And it's just so, I think it's so beautiful that like, I see that people come in as students and they think they might have an idea. And over the course of one semester, they become entrepreneurs. And to me, that is just the, the growth cycle, the rapid, um, just the emerging of somebody's passion and idea and their capacity to yeah. affect change in the community is so inspiring. Yeah. It is. How are we doing with our other room, Vivian? A little bit more time? I think they're almost done. So Ian, right? So we can actually start closing the room. So to we'll give them oh. 60, yeah, 60 seconds to right. go back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Excellent. And you know, and, and I just want to say it's just so exciting to not only be around all of you entrepreneurs, but just, I think it's so exciting to be uh, at City College at a time where entrepreneurship is getting so much focus. And Vivian has been doing so much work on creating these six different tracks by which you can get, you know, a certificate with. And beyond that, you know, the certificates being in different areas like marketing, visual media design, it's really creating this exciting web where entrepreneurs who obviously need support in a lot of different ways are actually picking a track of their entrepreneurship, but then might be able to collaborate with other entrepreneurs, students, and faculty in all six tracks to help fill out their business and make it more robust and get access to resources. So to me, of course, on a micro level with each individual student, it's so exciting, but just the progress that Vivian has been able to create, the power that she's been able to harness with the relationships at the school interdepartmentally, I just think is so amazing. So I know she hates it, but can we just all say thank you to Vivian? Thank you. Thank you. Just seeing you guys that you have come to this point, you know, and your product from really very raw idea and now culminating into this make me so fulfilled. Congratulations, everyone. Thank you. Especially yeah. when after the COVID-19, COVID everybody's idea changed. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that is quite a challenge for us too. Yeah, yeah. Well, really good challenge. And we lost several students, and we I saw that many uh, many students also have different challenges for them to move forward. So it was uh, heartbreaking that um, our priorities have changed, and others have uh, limited access to technology, and inequality really highlighted during this uh, particular point in time. Them. all the more that we need each other <laughs> and of course uh, all the support of these people who make this uh, event possible and all the uh, the uh, judges the community partners who are taking our students hand to provide all kinds of support to make your idea or bring it to the next level it's amazing all right so i guess we have everyone yeah fantastic all right. Do we have do we have our judges back? Well, <laughs> <laughs> we will. I, I have not yet closed the room, but oh, please, <clears throat> yeah, we can have them back. Yeah, and um, our department chair, department uh, business department chair, is with us also. Leo, would you like to say something while we're getting everyone back? <clears throat> Oh, 
Well, first of all, thank you, thank you, thank you, Vivian, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> she doesn't like to hear that, but it's true. You know, there's always a leader in any event and any group, right? And we look for your guidance and it's it's been a great opportunity and continual learning to see everyone do well, especially all the students. I'm very impressed. You, all of you represent it. Um, and it's a testament to how even this type of event where it's virtual, I mean, this is something we can do in the future. We can do one that's face-to-face, -face, real live, and we can do also virtual. That's where the future is. And like Eon said in the beginning, I mean, sometimes you're gonna do it in this format, or sometimes you're gonna be across someone at the table having coffee or another type of libation. So wonderful. Um, glad to be a part of, a small part of this and look forward to continued success. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, Leo. It's very good to hear your voice after a, uh, you know, an island of time since the last time. So it's so good to have you here. And the other computer doing work. <laughs> <laughs> You're working? Interesting. We had 83 people earlier and now we're down to 53. They just, you know, they just want to listen to the pitches and I, I guess we, we lost some of them already. Yeah, but it does look like we have our judges back in. Yeah. Hi, we're back. Fantastic. Well, well, you timed us so well that you know we could barely finish what we were talking about, and that was like boop, cut off. Oh well, Vivian, do you want to go ahead and uh, do you, should the judges go ahead and give their, you know, their verdict? Well, I think. Sorry, uh, what are we looking? For? Are we looking for top three? Can you please? Because uh, I'm. Yeah, we don't have any instructions on what it was that we were supposed to. <laughs> Two. Yeah, it's just a judge's favorite, so you just you're supposed to just tabulate, uh, deliberate One. who are your top three. Yeah. Okay. So, do you want the top three from each of us, or did you want combined who our top three were? Supposedly combined. Okay. Yeah. So. Do you mind if we go back now that we have the instructions? Do you mind if we go back and and oh. choose our top three yeah. together? <laughs> okay. Thank I you. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Um, <clears throat> Yes, maybe like three minutes. Okay. Sure, thank yeah, you. Plenty, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just one room, just one room for all four of you. Yeah. Yeah, we don't need two separate rooms, just one room for all judges to talk. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like all. yeah. And okay. also, of maybe at this point, while we're waiting for the three minutes, then um, we can come up with the results of the crowd's favorite. Yes. Yeah, let's do that. Mm -hmm. We can absolutely do that. <laughs> yes. uh, so on with the crowd favorite results. Um, and thank you. I did get those last votes for people that came in a bit later. Thank you for continuing to send those. So in place number three, we have Michelle Barber Goodman with Sundown Traditions. Congratulations. So with number two, uh, we have Mook with 24 hour yoga. Congrats on, on your placement. Super exciting. All right. Do we have a, well, maybe we have a snap roll. <laughs> oh, drum roll, snap roll. All right, and Kevin Posada, Green Wave, congratulations on snagging victory. <laughs> All right, congratulations, guys. Excellent. Well, you know, while we're waiting for the judges to come, I, I mean, there was, you know, a pretty heavy voting for these three. So does anybody want to share maybe as a learning, you know, as just for us all to learn, what stood out? What was it that set those apart? And what could we learn from them so we can maybe steal some of their skills or ideas to improve our own pitch next time? Any thoughts? Well, I'll, I'll, say, I'll say this, that the three of you, were totally believed, you know, and all in your own way, you know, whether it was, uh, and, and think about the, the differences of the businesses, right? Waste, you know, uh, you could say health and you could say beauty. I mean, you, you have these different uh, environments, totally different people. I mean, what a diverse group of crowd difference. But, you know, all three of you were very convicted about what you were sharing. You know, you believed what you were presenting to us. And that is uh, the passion that people look for in a business presentation, the same way we look for conviction and passion as an artist sings to us or acts for us. 
uh, in the same way the three of you emulated believability. I believed you, and clearly so did. Absolutely. And, and you know, and I also think, you know, uh, a couple of the winners I've seen, you know, before. So I know that practice also really, not only the practice of the pitch, right? Because the ability to pitch and to sell and connect someone's need to an idea, that's all an actual skill set. That's an influ a, a skill set of influencing that's really common among salespeople and other teachers, coaches, influencers. But it's also about history with your material, right? Really understanding what you're doing, understanding your market, and, and just having a lot of clarity. So that's what I was also seeing from these folks is a lot of not only understanding of themselves and how to sell it, but an understanding of connecting that need, you know, the solution and the need together really clearly. So I think that all of that was coming across with a lot of confidence. So all of that is just about time and practice too. So I also just want to say that I know as a coach who coaches public speakers that it's a very common fear. It's a scary thing, but that it is absolutely something that even though it might be uncomfortable, it's a skill set we can target and get better at. So I know that with the network you're building here, you have lots of resources to keep improving this. And I just want to say that if you keep working at it, you're going to know yourself better, your product better, your market better, your target audience better. And beyond that, just how to connect that all together with a really strong sales pitch. Well, I'd love to hear from any of the three favorites. If you want to come off mute um, and share any thoughts briefly. Travel um, yoga. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm here. Can you guys hear me? Yes, we can, Kevin. Go ahead. Yeah, I just want to say uh, thank you so much for the opportunity for you guys. And I appreciate the audience, uh, everyone in the audience, you know, who voted and, and, and took time to listen to all of the pitches. Um, it's been great. And, I, you know, for you, Ian, you were there when you, you, you saw my first pitch and how um, and how that went for me. And, you know, to be here and, and you know, to have confidently grown and uh, to be able to speak in front of people like this, uh, it's, it's all attributed to this Center for Entrepreneurship and Innovation. And, you know, thank you to Vivian so much. That gratitude can't be expressed enough. So thank you, guys. Yeah. It's uh, been a joy to watch you over the course of the last uh, three events that we've done, first event, um, and then seeing the progress, the last event, and then today, congratulations on being a crowd favorite. You know, you, you're really great at pitching, and uh, may you be as successful in the next of your business as you have got, you know, the business side, the making money, the building a team, the being, and, and, and remember, it takes a long time. You have to overcome a tremendous amount of adversity, and so be persistent, you know, break through the wall. Uh, clearly are an excellent human that is able to do things like being the crowd favorite and you're smart and you have a great idea. So can you be successful moving forward from today. Well, we still have two other winners. Would either of you like to uh, share uh, while we wait for the judges to jump? And just before we do, I just did want to acknowledge with everybody that um, we are aware that we are a bit over time. So I do know if people have to go, uh, you're of course welcome to. And if you can stay, we also would love to continue to have your presence here. And um, back to what Ian was saying, the other two, we'd love to hear from you as we're waiting for the judges. Well, Jonathan, don't discount. It's hard to leave when you're looking so good, you know? <laughs> like why not keep looking at Jonathan's amazing outfit? Thank you. I mean, this is the first time I put on a tie in like nine weeks, so I'm living for it right now. <laughs> it was worth it. We all won because of it. It was worth it. Michelle, did you want to hear? I, I tell you, thank you. We'd love I to did. Hear from you. I, thank you so much, Ian. Um, I'm just so moved that uh, people really heard my message despite my stumbles and inability to make it to the last slide in time. Um, it's, it's, an issue that I feel so passionate about. I feel it's very relevant to our time when, you know, hate crimes are at a 16 year high. That's something we should all be concerned about. And even though it's just a small candle, I really feel like our message, our awareness campaign um, 
the contributions and the proceeds that go to museums and, and education, I do think that can make an impact. And I don't, I'm not sure if I got it across, but I feel like we have a very strong team uh, with my spouse and partner, Jody, who's been in the entertainment industry for 30 years. She has personal relationships with people who have high visibility who can help strengthen the importance of our message. So thank you very much. I, I, I don't even know what to say. I, I'm just very moved and thank you for the opportunity. You did a great job. And thank you. And Michelle, I, I just love what you were just saying. And, you know, like I just got this image of like you said, it's only one small candle. But, you know, when you put together the light of a thousand little candles, it can light up an entire community or the world. Um, so thank you. And again, I just want to say thanks for getting through. I think a lot of you not getting to the last slide was the mechanics of this. But um, obviously it resonated beyond that. So thank, thank you. Jonathan. And I think we are all ready now with the uh, judge's decision so great mm -hmm. I just can close the room. room yeah yeah um crowd favorite you want to jump in and share for 15 seconds as the judges come all right <clears throat> and for some of you were asking yes this uh, class is going to be offered in the fall and uh, in, in spring 2021, we're going to have uh, principles of marketing online. And by the way, you guys have taken principles of marketing. That's part of the certificate. So if you completed that and then applied design thinking and some of those courses within the business department, you will get a certificate of achievement on top of your certificate of marketing uh, uh, class. I mean, on top of the certificate of marketing. All right, so it's, you can stack it. That's why we call it a stackable certificate. And if you want to know more about that, then you can uh, send an email or I definitely would post what are the other certificate of achievements that we offer within the program. Just like what um, Jonathan was saying that we have six certificates, fashion, culinary, broadcast media, visual media design, business and journalism. And we are excited that these departments are partnering with us to really provide entrepreneurial education accessible to any discipline within the college. Thank you. Okay, I think we got everyone back. All right, it looks like we have our judges back in here. Thank you so much for going back and re-deliberating with the clarified request. Uh, did you wanna go ahead and announce? Yeah, I think Lauren, is Lauren with us now? Yep, I'm not, I'm not going to be the one um, announcing Oh, Stacy, no. yes, Stacy, sorry. <laughs> All right, it is me. And all right, I just want to say first off, thank, thank you all for participating. Um, you all did a really good job. I know sometimes it can be uh, just a finding the gumption sometimes to get up in front of people is difficult for some people. So I think everyone deserves an applause. So you all did a great job. So that said, uh, we did choose three. And uh, number three, excuse me, hold on one second. So you, you all know, given this is uh, where we all live, I live in the Tenderloin, and I think that we're going to change our the name of our neighborhood to Siren City. So not entirely for sure there. So excuse me. But uh, number three is Stud Hub. So good job there. Congratulations. Coming in second with the silver is Jim Mack. And... Number three, or excuse me, number one. And the gold winner here is uh, Green Wave. Good job, guys. All right, now I'm gonna turn it back over to Jonathan, I believe. Awesome, awesome. I just wanna say uh, a big, a big thank you. Um, I know that we're all used to dealing in different ways than this and sometimes looking at a computer screen for three to three and a half hours is its own type of difficult task. So uh, thank you judges for volunteering your time to really support our entrepreneurs. You really make a massive difference just in being present, but then beyond that, connections that are provided is just so exciting. Um, 
I know that we heard from Leo. So I just, we're, we're at about time. I want to congratulate our winners. And I want to just hand it back over to Vivian uh, just to go ahead and say any last moments before we part ways here. Yeah, so I just want to give the last few minutes here to each one of our judges to say something that they, they're parting words. Yeah. Jordan, could, could we start? Could we start with you? You've been with us for most of these events. Do you want to say whatever parting words you have? Oh, is she frozen? Was that a call out? No, Lauren. Lauren, do you want to do you want to jump in? Sorry, I thought you we... said Jordan. I was like, I'm not sure who Jordan is. Um, uh, yeah, so thank let's you so much. Yeah. The same. The same. We introduced ourselves. So, Lauren, right. why don't you parting words, and then Stacy. And then, uh, yeah. yeah, I just want to congratulate everyone who presented today. Um, it takes a lot of courage to share your ideas. Um, please don't let this be the last time. Please let this be just part of something that you get really excited about, um, not just sharing it in this format, but sharing your ideas with everybody you know and everybody you meet, because you never know who the person is that's going to be the one that's going to be making those introductions. Um, opening doors for you and everybody here had really well thought out and uh, and exciting ideas that have so much potential. So thank you for giving me the opportunity to listen and I'm really excited to stay connected to you all. Thank you. Thank you, Lauren. Stacy. Go ahead, Stacey. Yeah. So I want to say you guys, again, congratulations, everyone. I think you all did a great work and it was most certainly apparent in uh, the pitches. And I leave here inspired. I hope you all leave here inspired as well and continue to really chase uh, your presentations, these projects and hone your ideas. I think that's gonna be really important. And I know a lot of you are um, curious about Indiegogo and crowdfunding in general. If there's ever anything that I can do or if you ever need any, uh, uh, anyone to make an introduction into anything that you think that Indiegogo could help you with, let me know. You can email me at stacy at indiegogo.com. Super available for whatever you guys need. And thank you all. I, again, I live here very inspired and I hope you all do too. And um, I'm gonna go next. My, uh, I Again, thank you so much for presentations and um, I know sometimes it can be nerve-wracking to actually present and especially when it's technology and you want to be in control and somebody else is in control of your slides that might be <laughs> adding on, on top of your anxiety. What I'd like my suggestion would be as a person who who does a lot of work on the global scale and in humanitarian work, I'd like to see if you are able, all of you, to connect your ideas to sustainable development goals. And that's what I usually teach my youth that I, uh, I ran um, an incubator at goodler.org. You can see more information there. But it, uh, we, it's, we call it Zoom Out. How does your idea um, makes a difference for the world at large. And you can see 17 sustainable development goals online and just see where, which, which of the goals you are trying to help with by seeing your idea come, uh, become a reality. Um, and that will give you a bigger perspective on not only on your idea, but in the world in general, and hopefully will uh, continue to help you to stay inspired to move it forward. Thank you. Thank you, Galina. Uh, Glenn? Hi. Yes, hi. Yeah, no, I, I, you know, for all the wonderful words that my, um, uh, my colleagues have uh, shared with you and uh, stated. So I just wanna congratulate everyone. I think it was a great, great session. Uh, it was very interesting, very inspiring and definitely something you should continue working on. Um, keep pivoting, keep uh, connecting, forming partnerships. Remember this post COVID world is going to be different, but it's going to be interesting. So uh, the world is yours and um, use your powers wisely. Okay. And you have a lot of powers in your hands. So uh, uh, just, um, just keep in mind that the idea is, is great. The idea is wonderful. However, the implementation is as, as important as possible. Uh, so it's sort of like having this um, uh, implementation or what we call execution intelligence 
that you want to keep in mind. And if if not say, let's say some of you are, are not necessarily strong in that area, find someone who is. Okay, so no idea is valid uh, without implementation. Okay, it's uh, that's why go to market strategy is so crucial. And that's what a lot of companies pay a lot of money for to get excuse me, to get, it's true, uh, to get that, um, to get that model, to get that strategy. So uh, uh, keep, keep going, keep pushing, and I'm sure you'll be successful. Thank you. Thank you so much. And at this point, you know, we are concluding this event. And again, my heartfelt gratitude to all the judges and for those who've been supporting us for many years, Ian, Lauren, and I hope that Stacy and Gleb would still help us again moving forward, Galena, and all the students, I'm so proud of you. You came into this class sometimes that you're like, I don't know where to start. And I know this tonight is just the beginning, all right? This is just the beginning, but you have now some people here who are willing to support you, to mentor you, please. The next step is up to you. So execution is our, it's your next goal. So please continue developing all your ideas. This is just the beginning and we're happy to support you and guide you along the way. So thank you again, everyone. So this concludes our event and thank you so much, Jonathan, oh. faculty who are around. Heartfelt thanks and gratitude. This won't happen without all the support. It takes a village. I really believe that. It takes a village. Thank you, Vivian. Thank you, Jonathan. Great MP's work. And uh, thank you, Ian, and everyone else. Wonderful. And thank you again to our leader, Vivian. So appreciated. And I just wanted to tell everybody, please reach out to me. Um, get my contact info from Vivian. If anyone wants help with pitching, um, I do a lot of coaching around that kind of stuff. So I'm happy to be a part of uh, your growth. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye, friend. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you so much. Everybody. Thank you, everyone in the class. Good luck, everyone. Good luck. Yes, good luck. Yeah. Let's do it. You can do it. Yeah, this is just the beginning. Do it. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, just do it. Yeah. I'll see you in Yoga 24, okay? Mm -hmm. See you everyone in, uh, you know, at least come into the 24 hour yoga sometime. All right, Vivian, it's just yes. you and I, we're five. Huh? So if you have any say to the internet audience, now is your time. Oh <laughs> Maybe God. tell them about the event, then you're, uh, you're- Can, your can we now computer. stop the recording? <laughs> and then I'll stop it. Is there anything you wanna say? If somebody watched this all the way through, and here they are, hey, thanks for your attention, we appreciate it. Um, we almost had a hundred people that joined us on Zoom. We were streaming live on YouTube and Amazon Alexa, and so, before I end the live stream for YouTube, maybe you could just mention like, hey, we do this at CCSF and this is what's happening coming up. Yeah, so I am finally, I'm glad that we reached this culminating event for our for our students, entrepreneurial entrepreneurship students. And I'm just like what I said, this is just the beginning. And for me, I, I'm measuring the success of what they have accomplished, not in terms of, if this idea would come to fruition or the idea would go to market, but how they were able to develop that entrepreneurial mindset, which composed of resilience, greed, gratitude, uh, higher appetite for failure and higher appetite for risk. I think in this course, that's something that we really would love to our students to embrace. It is really again about um, the skill set that they could make use of in their own professional life, not only in their, uh, I mean, in their personal life, not only in their professional life or in their career. There's so many transferable skills that they could have learned from having this entrepreneurial education. And if they could apply them in whatever facets of their life, I think um, we are pretty successful.
you're on mute. I can't hear you. You know what? That's one issue about technology. You can't be on mute. Yeah. You're on mute, you just wait and yeah. not saying anything. Yeah. So goodbye, internet. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying thank you for watching. Thank you for tuning in. This matters. It's young uh, people that are at least young in entrepreneurship going to the introduction of entrepreneurship that Vivian runs so excellently at the City College of San Francisco, known as the Harvard of City Colleges, uh, could say so many great things about their school and about their faculty, especially about Vivian and these amazing students. What a great experience. Glad that you tuned in. Goodbye for now. We do this twice a year. We'll be back again soon.